We good? Nation, we good? Yo, yo, yo. Can y'all hear me? We good? I had to turn my Wi-Fi back on. Are we straight? Are we good? Chili Man, Matt, Mike, Terrence, Deadly, Scott, Chuckles. What's good? What's good? What's good? Wipe them feet, man. Hit them thumbs up. We are back. Raiders! Let's go, y'all. Stu is about to pull up. He hit me about 10 minutes ago. He said, let me take a quick shower real quick so I can jump on the live. But Stu will be back on in a minute. For those who don't know, our former uh, third-round pick out of Purdue, safety, Stuart Schweiger, will be in the building once again. That is my bro. Right now, he is actually in Las Vegas at a Raider alum party. Um, they flew all the, the veterans out there, man, all the guys that came up, Raider guys, and they out there right now rocking, man. So Big Stu will be back in the building in no time. Until then, let's just chill. Let's have some fun. Let's talk about some more football again. Eddie is back. KJ is back. Chronicles is back. Terrence, what's up with you, my brother? Chili man, man, baby dolls. Let's go. Jack Kenneth, Sacramento, we in the building. Let's go. Let's go. Gary, Arkham, Dustin, what's up, my brother? Oh, man, you missed the last live, man. That shit was epic, man. We was on for a cool little hour. Um, yeah, before somebody tried to uh, park my shit. <laughs> somebody tried to park my shit, y'all. Somebody to hit my Wi-Fi and interfere with some shit. But we here now. John John, 2-1, clear. I will be there, Charles City. I'll be at I'll be at the event, brother. John John, clear. Surf's gonna choke like you always do. Let's go. I told y'all, man. I told y'all, man. I owe y'all because y'all helped me find this newfound freedom that I got. So we're going to drink. We're going to talk. We're going to have some fun tonight, man. You know what I mean? We back. We back. We lit. I can't wait to get Stu ass on. He about to be. Hey, for those who didn't watch the Stu uh, interview last week, that shit was crazy. It was epic. And my boy Stu is a nut. And I love him, man. For real. Real shit. Um, let me see. Shout out to my brother Caleb, man. Appreciate you, brother. Welcome to the membership family, King. My God, my God, my God. It says right now you're live with Stuart Schwager. Someone's hacking your shit, bro. Marcus, no, I'm not. It, it, he will be on here in a minute. He already he got <laughs> he, he got the invite, bro. He's in Vegas right now getting this shit together real quick before he comes on. Trust me. Ain't nobody, ain't nobody hacking nothing, bro. Uh, don't talk about ankle socks around high show Valerie. You ain't never lied. Um, me and the aliens was hacking your shit. I, oh, gee, I knew it was you, bro. I knew it was you. Yeah, he's a nut. He's a raider. Facts. Shout out to my brother Hustler Jones in the building, man. Yes, yes. Let's get it. Let's get it. Um. One more time real quick before Stu does come on. How do you guys feel about the whole Gerald McCoy signing? I am very excited about it. I think that that is a perfect depth piece for this defensive line. I feel that he is going to be one of our top defensive tackles. If he can stay healthy this year, he's going to be a monster. Um, I love it, man. I love it. I love that Gruden is not stopping. He's continuing to find a way to continue to build this team, and he's doing it in the trenches. If you guys are not seeing the trend, the offensive line, we're bringing guys in and out. The defensive line, we're bringing guys in and out. We're trying to continue to build in the trenches, and that's where you win football games. Exactly, Chuckles. Low risk, high reward, my brother. Exacto mundo. Real shit. And I haven't seen a contract yet, but you have to assume that it's really cheap. I know that he just signed. He, last year he signed, what was it, a three-year deal with the Cowboys? Three-year, $18 million deal, somewhere around there. So you're looking at what, $6 million a year? He can't, ex even, he can't even expect that right now. So I'm assuming you can maybe cut that in half. You know what I'm saying? Um, so it's going to be a cheap, it's going to be a cheap, cheap pickup. Um, shout out to my brother, Devon Spears. Man, I appreciate you, brother. Welcome to the channel, King. Thank you, my brother, 
Thank you, thank you, thank you. Welcome to the membership, Family King. Uh, we're going to have a lot of fun this season, my brother. So stay tuned, man. We're going to be going crazy, crazy. Shout out to my brother, Dustin, as always, man. I love you, my brother. Um, he always just supports this channel every second he can, man. This is for the next chapter in your life, bro. Salute, Raider Nation for life, baby. Kuntz, 10 plus sex. McCoy was a fire pickup. I appreciate you. And Dustin, I would love to bring you on the show, uh, the show next week as well, if possible, uh, with OG, uh, with Kev. And uh, I'm going to bring Raider Reppin' for life on as well, man. I love to have my guys come on and talk that shit. You know what I'm saying? My boy Kev back in here, man. Let's go. Let's go. Bass says, let's sign um, KJ right now. I would not be mad about that. But I think that we're pretty deep, uh, pretty deep right now at the linebacker position. I think now seeing Javen White and Tanner Muse even being involved right now with the ones and twos, I'm not too concerned about the linebacker position anymore. And – Let's be honest, y'all. If 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 Nick Wachowski is kind of being shunned upon, like like nobody's really looking at him as that guy now, they're for sure not going to look at KJ Wright because they both kind of have similar games. You know what I'm saying? Um, I think that Gus wants the guys that can play the play the um play the run, um, but but really play the pass. Um, and all these guys have similar builds. You look at Littleton. You look at Devon Diablo. You look at Tanner Muse. Uh, these guys are that they're more new, newer breed type linebackers you feel me and Kwiatkowski is one of them old type you know what I mean built type guys and I think that KJ Wright still fits that mold as well um my brother man Jason Hall I appreciate you King you may be able to buy the Raiders with all these super chats love you bro congrats man appreciate you bro appreciate you my brother thank you so much sir my guy man my guy Jason Hall man you guys are like I said man you guys are making it easy for me man to to walk away from my job bro and I and, and what's funny is a lot of those people that worked with me they they they, they subscribe they're subscribed to the channel so um they see what's going on and they know we shoot movies over here man so at the end of the day man shout out to them but more importantly shout out to y'all um josh says docs you should go um to the first preseason game i'm gonna go bro i wish i could my brother um now <laughs> now that i got all kind of other shit going on with, with trying to do this full time it's gonna be kind of rough but um, I would love it. I would love to. Um, we'll see. You never know, man. With me, I'm so sporadic. I may pop up just on some random shit. Um, Chuck, man, shout out to you, my brother. <coughs> COVID and shit. Do you think there's anyone else worth signing after the McCoy uh, acquisition? Uh, outside of him, my brother, uh, the only one, and Bass said it, I think KJ Wright. That's the only guy that I can look at. Um, I'm not really big on nobody else at all. Maybe Mitchell Schwartz. And we just got rid of, you know, I mean, we have a starting right tackle, though. You know what I'm saying? With Leatherwood. So I'm a little, you know, ah. But um, maybe Mitchell Schwartz right tackle if, if he's willing to back up uh, Leatherwood. Um, other than that, man, KJ Wright. That's 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 all I got. That's all I got, brother. Uh, Chile, yo, graphic. 17 more days, my boy. Taking my sons, baby Daniel and Stevie to their first Raider game. I can't wait. Oh, man, my internet tweaking again, y'all. Can y'all see me? Can y'all hear me? Can't wait to go. We're going to see what the nation is all about, man. My brother, man, it's a nothing. There's nothing like a first game, man. Nothing like a first game. Y'all can hear me, right? Y'all can still see me? We good? We good? We good? We live in living color? Cool. We straight. That's all I needed to see. Good. But uh, that's that's dope, my brother. That's dope, Chile. Have fun, my brother. Have fun, King. Have fun, brother. Jack says 916 is here for you. Hometown respect. You already know. Got that nine, South Sacramento right there. Got that 916 right here. Shout out to my brother Jack, as always, supporting the channel. You already know. You already know. Las Vegas says 916 Sacramento CA. Yes, sir. Hey, y'all, Stu will be here in a minute. He will be here in a minute. Give my guy some time. He will be here in a minute. He still don't know how to fucking work uh, 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 phones and shit. So he's still trying to figure it all out. But he will be here soon. This is the best porn channel I've ever subscribed to. Damn, bro. Oh, gee, I, I think porn hub better, bro. I'm going to be totally honest with you, bro. You know what I mean? I'm going to be totally real with you because at least over there, you can find some pussy. You feel me? We ain't pussy over here. You feel me? <laughs> Shout out to the Raider X. There's no shade. I'm just fucking with y'all. Just fucking with y'all. I'm just fucking with y'all. You already know. You already know. You already know. You already know. 
You already know. Let's go. Shots, man. Who taking one with me? Who taking one with me? Who taking one with me? Come on. I'm drinking until I black out tonight, y'all. Oh, God. I'm, I'm, I'm telling Stu, like, look, take over the show, bro. Just take over the show. I am what I eat. There you go, Terrence. There you go, bro. Oh, shit. Ah. It's worth it, though. I'm about to go pick my brother up from the airport tomorrow, hungover. Who's watching the game tomorrow? Who's watching the game tomorrow, man? I don't give a fuck because it's not the Raiders. But um, Hall of Fame game tomorrow, man. Steelers and Cowboys. What's y'all predictions? Um, I wouldn't mind if the if if the field folded in like like Batman, uh, like the Batman movie. You know what I'm saying? And just everybody just kind of just went away. You know what I mean? But who y'all got? Who y'all got? Lil Sean says, I will send you money right now, Docs. Uh, my brother, you here, man. Let's have some fun. Let's have some fun, King. Let's have some fun, brother. Let's have some fun, man. Don't worry about it. Don't worry about it, brother. Um, yo, Docs, when you going live with Scout again? Uh, SJ, we're we're gonna me and Scout have an actual show. We're gonna do the scouting report every Friday during the season. So most definitely you will see me and Scout live every Friday night. Graph, we close. We're going to have to link up chuckles, bro. Just let me know. Let me know when, bro. It's all good. What's up, man? Oh, you trying to get some alcohol? Valerie got 2117 Cowboys. Thor, you already know it's good, bro. You already know it's good. I wanted to get y'all on my show, too, when I get out there. But I'm going to be moving and grooving, bro. I'll be out in Vegas September 9th to September 14th. I got two Raider anthems that I'm recording. And I'm trying to knock out an album as well while I'm out there. And I'm trying to do as many uh, podcasts as I can. But, um, yeah, I'm trying to knock out at least seven songs on top of the Raider uh, Raider anthems. So I'm going to be busy as fuck. But, bro, you, you can always pull up to the studio if you want to, my brother. Um, it's all love. Shout out to Terrence, man. OakLawsVegas.com. Shout out to my brother Terrence, man, as always. This channel does not work without Terrence. Um, that is my website, y'all. If y'all want to go check out the gear, go grab you some. OaklawsVegas.com is celebrating all three homes, man. Um, you know, all the places we play. Go check it out. Kev said, hold on. OG drinking that Coke 45. Bro, I grew up on that shit. I grew up on that shit, bro. Uh, became a member of the chat gang. There we go, bro. Become a member of the chat gang right there, man. Shout out to my brother Terrence. Um, don't ever stop making, uh, don't ever stop doing Raider songs. Oh, Ken, I'm not. I'm not, bro. I got a few of them on the way. Got a few of them on the way. I'm doing one solo, and then I got one with a bunch of other artists that you guys are going to appreciate. I promise you. Um, Dead Raider says, what you drinking? Rum, vodka, tequila? I'm on a tequila, King. I'm on a tequila, brother. Walt says, will Rasul Douglas, Amik, and Isaiah Johnson make the cut? Well, you know what's so crazy, bro? I think Amik will make it for sure. Uh, Isaiah Johnson, him dealing with that leg injury is going to probably, he's going to be on the cusp, man. I don't even know if he's going to make the team. And Rasul Douglas, man, it's been really quiet on the Rasul Douglas uh, tip. But he's only 25. He's, he's low-key a veteran in this league, and I think he can still um, fill a void. You know what I mean? He could be a backup over there. Um, behind Casey Hayward, um, you know, our neck and back up Mullen or, or or vice versa. You know what I'm saying? I, I would love to see Rasul Douglas make this team because I was, I've been a huge fan of him since West Virginia. So I hope he makes the team. Um, I watched you drink, bro. It's kind of pussy. I hear you, King. I hear you, King. <laughs> uh, wipe your feet, man. Brush them shoulders, man. It's all business graph. You already know LA Dez, my brother, man. My brother. TN says collab with Ice Cube. Let me tell you something, my brother. It's not easy, man, to get Ice Cube on something. If I can make that happen, bro, I I'm going to be honest. I'm a very humble individual. If I do a Raider anthem with Ice Cube, at that point, I'm like, look, I'm a legend. Sorry, y'all. At that point, I'm going to feel myself just a little bit. I'm going to be like, I'm a legend. I'm a legend. Mary looking, uh, looking easy. Good. Imagine year three, bro. Uh, he is looking really, really good out there right now. He's looking really good out there. 
that pass he broke up on Hunter Renfro. Hunter looked confused as shit. He was like, holy fuck. And I love what Derek Carr said about uh, Merrick as well. He said, if he can continue to do this type shit in practice, I can't wait to see him do it against Mahomes. That's pretty much what he said. You know what I mean? In a nutshell. So, you know, um, I love it, man. Edwards going to be a threat in the red zone. I'm telling you right now, fam, I, the shit I'm hearing out of camp is insane. I'm hearing that this guy looks like a superstar right now. The only thing that ever holds Brian Edwards back is his health. If he can stay healthy, Brian Edwards will be a number one receiver in this league. I'm telling y'all now, if he breaks out this year, there's no reason even to go get Devontae Adams. You could save that money and put it towards the defense. Because I'm telling you now, Ruggs is going to do his thing regardless. But if Edwards shows up in true form, bro, this we don't even need Devontae Adams. Hold on real quick. Stu, just text me, man. Yeah. Hit the link. We lit. Cool. All right, bet. Stu on his way, y'all. Stu is on his way. But look, Edwards is going to be a star, man. I'm telling you. Like, it's just... It's real shit. It's just real shit. Uh, shout out to my brother, man, Jack, one more time. Docs, when are you coming home to Sacramento? Maybe you can talk me into OG show. Let's grab a beer. Bro, I can bring, bro, you can come on regardless. Bro, I don't have to be in Sacramento, my brother. We can bring you on and we can talk some shit. Bro, you know how we do. For anybody that's new to this channel, if you ever want to come on alive and just talk about our Raiders, bro, all you got to say is, Graf, I want to come on and talk. That's what we do over here, bro. You ain't got to pay me to come on. You ain't got to do none of that. You already know, bro. Just hit me up and say, woo, woo, woo. But, Jack, I'm, I'm, I'm looking forward to coming home probably in the next few weeks. Me and my wife was talking about, now that I'm not working, uh, we were talking about going home for a month. You know what I'm saying? So we may go home for a month. And um, I want to do some shows at Oakland Coliseum. I want to drive down to um, the Coliseum in L.A. I want to do some lives down there. And then I'm going to be in Vegas a bunch. So you feel me? But um, yeah, man. I like what I said. I'm not worrying about the two young receivers. We don't need Adams. I hear you, King. I hear you, King. Um, Gruden got a cut. Rugs and Edwards loose. More targets. Kev, you ain't never lied, brother. Never lied, brother. James says, "Stu, Stu, Stu. He about to pull up. He about to pull up. He about to pull up. I'm wait. I'm waiting to see somebody in the uh, in backstage so I can uh." So I can bring him back. So I can bring it back. Stu! Come on, Stu. <laughs> Shout out to my brother Watts, man. Um, I hear Ruggs is turning heads. Gustavo, me too. I'm hearing that hemp. Look, and Renfro too. I don't think y'all might. We may have one of the firest trios at wide receiver this year, y'all. Hunter Renfro is killing shit at camp. Ruggs is killing shit. And Brian Edwards looks like he's above and beyond both of them. So at the end of the day, man, like, I don't know, man. I don't know. I, I can see this offense taking another step forward and just killing shit. As long as this defense can show up, it is what it is. Uh, Bass says Renfro is cooking docs. This is facts. This is facts. Foster's going to be a weapon again. Like rookie year, AB. You ain't never lie, brother. That's one of my sleepers this year. Real shit. Um, Renfro, sneaky good. Valerie, that's facts. Knock. I used to live in San Ho, my brother. I love San Ho. I lived on the east side, bro. Trust me. Off Tully. I lived on Tully. Let me see. Um, Doc, Jack Kenneth says, Doc's. Let's raft on the American River. Your wife and mine can chill and talk that shit. That'd be fire, my brother. That'd be fire, brother. We're going to talk about that. We're going to talk about that, Kenneth. Facts, bro. Let me see. Drake and Josh going to be fire. I would love to talk with Stu. You know what, man? Hold on, OG. Hold on, OG. I'm trying to get this right real quick. Hold on. Hold on real quick, y'all. Hold on. Hold on real fast. Real quick, real quick, real quick.
Hold on real quick, y'all. Hold on. Yo, 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 yo. All right, we good. We good. OG, I just sent you an email, man. Pull up. Come on. Come on. Come on. Pull up. Brad is crazy. 916 is in the building. Shout out to my brother Marvin. Shout out to the 220 people in the chat right now, man. I appreciate you guys. Make sure to wipe them feet, man. Hit that subscribe button, man. Welcome to the channel, man, where we keep shit funky, we keep it lit, and we keep shit ultra real over here, man. You already know. Um, let me see. Let me see. Okay. Add to the stream. Oh, shit. Hold on. Hold on. Knox says, I live off telly. That's what's up. That's what's up. OG, your shit tweaking, bro. I can't even see you. I'm see closing you, out, trying to close out the... Um... Oh, shit. Hold on. Trying Hold to close on, out man. one Hold to on. get to the other. Hold on. Let me get close. This shit wildin', man. Yo. Hey. What's up, OG? I can't see you. I'm in the live stream, but I'm not in uh, YouTube. And no, you are. You are. That's some strange shit. You in the building. Everybody see you. Everybody can see me but me. <laughs> hey, well, you know what you look like, man. So who gives a shit? What's up with yeah, you, man? Who gives a damn, right? What's up, bro? I, I want to talk to Stu, man. Stu will be on in a second. Hold on, bro. Hold on. Hold on, son. Hold on. Stu will be here in a second. He just hit me up right now. Said he about to pull up. Son, go, go. Go. What's up? Oh, now I can see stuff. Nice. There we go. OG is in the building. We're going to definitely talk. What's up, son? How you doing, bro? Blessings, man. Blessings upon blessings, man. Okay. Congratulations, bro. We so, all hope to get there. Bro, I'll be in in a minute. I appreciate that, bro. I, I really do, man. I re bro, every time I go live, my sons be ready to attack me, bro. It's like they know I'm on my show, and they're like, let me just do some extra shit to get on. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Yeah, it's genetic. <laughs> Thanks. But shout out to you, my brother, man. Thank you so much for the kind words, man. Um, it was that time, bro. It was that time, man. Um, Dude, you got me into this. You you threw me into like, no, you need to have your own show, G. I'm like, uh, so I did a show. I dropped a video today. And I'm getting them laughing faces on it. What was it? I, I, I didn't see it. <laughs> you had to go watch it. Uh, bro, I, I didn't get a notification. That's what I'm saying. It's like a one minute, 15 second video, bro. Um, I went to Deadly Peggy's. Um, hold on, hold on, hold on. Hold down on, hold on. the track. I love you, bro. Love you, bro. Y'all got me through this stuff last year. This whole channel got me through it. I ain't doing no woo 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 shit. Y'all got me through the hardest time of my life. Let's go. Let's go. Stu will be on in a second, man. He over there trying to get cleaned up and all that goofy shit. I'm going to get on. Yeah. <laughs> Shout out to my he's, brother. He's using his, uh, he, he, he's probably utilizing his um, Manscaped ball wash or something. Speaking of, speaking of that. There he is. Oh! Stu, let's go. I love it, brother. Where you at? So I'm at the um the 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 Raiders Hotel, the uh um, the M the M Resort. I love it, man. Real quick, Stu, let me introduce you, man, to my OG right here. This is Daniel, diehard Raider fan, man, since a youngin. He's been around since the glory days. Um. I brought him on because, you know, I said, my brother Stu about to come on. He said, I want to talk to Stu a little bit. So I said, let me bring my guy on, man. 
and, and, and boom, here you go, you know? Been a fan since 1974, but let's talk. Yeah. I remember the Miami game. What? Gus Farratt <laughs> thought he was going to score, launched one into the end zone. You oh, kicked yeah. it off. No, no, dude, this was so easy looking. You made it look so easy. This shit looked like it was schemed. Well, and you brought it out to the 25, 30, and you got racked. But... Well, that's the thing. If if Kirk Morrison blocks that tight end, I score, man. I was trying to get I was trying to go with that thing. So that was that was my first interception. Um my first NFL career interception was was that Miami game. And you, then No, I remember watching that. I was like, whoa. He and then I look, also you made it look so damn easy. I, I appreciate that very much. Um, and then I also had a, a a forced fumble, fumble recovery on Ronnie Brown. Dude, you were a fumble recovery specialist. I was. I was. My goal was I wanted to get around the ball. That was always my goal to get around the ball. That's when good things happen, right? Get around yeah, but, the ball. But, but, but every time there was a fumble, you were the only guy hawking that <laughs> shit. It was honestly. You, it was. It was either you, me or Woodson. It was either me or Woodson that were getting those balls coming through. Yeah. Yeah, but the first couple of years, dude, you were like hawking. I, I appreciate that. You know what else made that game special was Nick Saban was the head coach. And when I was getting out of high school, I was I'm from being from Michigan. Um, obviously, Michigan State was a school I was highly considering. And when I went on my visits to Notre Dame, Michigan, um, Wisconsin, uh, Purdue, the head coaches usually stay with the offense. The defensive coordinator is usually like your head coach, right? Like yeah. that's who you see. Nick Saban was the only head coach that I had ever seen on the defensive side of the ball and specifically coaching the secondary. So I'm like, dude, Nick Saban, he had just come from Cleveland as a defensive back coach. Right. And I'm going, man, this guy – this guy's a great coach. He's running a great program. And I really liked what he was doing. And then he went and signed the first, I think, million-dollar contract with LSU. And then Bobby Williams came into helm, which Bobby Williams is actually a former Purdue football player. And I just – I didn't vibe with what the program was going on with. But Nick Saban was the guy that I knew he was great back in the early – late 90s. And yeah. to be able to play against him in that Miami game and talk to him after the game was really, really cool to be able to do that. Hey, let me you know, ask funny, you. You know what's oh, funny oh, is my oh, brother was a Pop Warner and then he went to high school coach. And he had a kid on his team, Mike Hart. Mike Hart went to Michigan. Yeah, Mike he Hart also, Mike Hart was a great running for back. For, a great running back for Michigan. And, and if I, I think he is at – he's a coach now. Mm -hmm. He, um, I know he was coaching running backs in Indiana at Indiana University. I'm not sure where he's at now, but Mike Hart is a was a great player, uh, a great a, a great person, um, and he was a guy that um, I'm happy to see him in coaching because there's not enough good coaches around. I hopefully he can continue to make it, but Mike Hart's a great player. Well, a totally smart and, kid. And, His family owned a dry cleaning business in Syracuse, New York. My, I, I used to, I'm from that that area. So you're from Syracuse? You no, know, I'm from Ithaca, oh, which okay. is an hour south. But my brother was a coach in Syracuse. He coached Mike Hart and Pop Warner, and then in high school, who also they um, they uh, Mike Hart coached. Uh, what was it Ladini? No, uh, guy who's playing running back for the uh, 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 Saints right now. He's he's Used a running for the Raiders. Oh 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 oh! oh you talking about uh, one one of our our former running back? Mm hmm. Um, who? Uh, tall as hell, Central Florida. Um 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 um. um. Central Number Florida. Eight. Murray, Latavius Murray, Murray. Murray. Latavius Murray, right? Okay, and Mike okay, Hart okay. coached him. See, is it, it continually runs? It's like Mike Hart coached uh, Latavius Murray in Syracuse, 
Do you know? And, uh, do you so know his where long we're... lineage starting with my brother, who used to be a a, a, a security <laughs> guard. He kind of all sat there watching monitors and drawing up plays and went into coaching. It's funny. Do you know where Mike Hart is now, by chance? In Syracuse, or or no, he's he may be in Indiana. I want to. I'm gonna. I want to grab my laptop real quick. Hold on one second, fellas. No, and sorry, I didn't. I didn't bring a dang stand here. So hopefully this phone. I, I he's still, either in Indiana, Michigan, or Syracuse. My brother is like good friends with him. I should have had him on here, but my brother is a damn Tampa Bay Buccaneers fan. I hate it. <laughs> hey, real quick, hey, real quick, why are you doing that? How was your trip, brother? Well, you know what? I want to make sure now that we did our first interview oh, and waiter. everything was awesome, I want to make sure that we're answering any questions. Do we have any questions at all? Yes, I will bring up anybody. Well, I want to make uh, I'm going to throw a few in there here and there, right? But okay. when you get home and we can actually really focus, I know you out there on business. I want us to really sit down and have a show where we can talk to everybody. Okay, this, okay. This, this, this show right here is pretty much let the nation know what you got going on in Vegas. Okay. And, 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 and no, no, when you get home, brother, trust me. I want the, everybody has questions, man. So we're going to get to But how is Vegas thus far? How was your trip? So it was, and what was awesome, there was a lot of guys from my era. Justin Fargus, Doug Gabriel, Courtney Anderson. Oh, yeah. Baby in Washington, uh, Joe Echimundu, um, Zach Crockett, uh, who, uh, uh, Keon Nash, Josh Taves. Um, oh, man, uh, I'm trying to think of who else guys that were here. Um, oh, gosh. But there is, was is old, there? Who? Did you, have you seen C-Wood? No, he wasn't able to make it because of the whole Hall of Fame thing. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, I'm yeah sure so he wasn't able to make it. But we had over, I think there was over maybe 120 former players that came back. Jim Otto was here. Jim Otto showed up. Wow. Um, I, I, you, you sent me that picture, bro. Oh, my God, bro. Yeah. Which I'm, one? I'm, I'm, yeah, which I'm one? Which, which one? You sent me a picture of, uh, of Otto when he was walking into the – or when he was going inside the – um. Okay. The I, area. Okay. Yeah, so here's what's really cool. So, all right, um, the alumni board here, man, like there's four full-time staff, and they did, I mean, first class everything, man. Like, for, I'll show you, too. I got like a, a bag of swag or whatever, all Raider stuff. I haven't even looked through it yet, so we'll go through it together. Um, mm -hmm. But just, so Monday, we let's see, I got in Sunday, and then Monday at 3 was check-in, and then at 6 <laughs> o'clock, we went up on top of the hotel up here where they had food and everything. And that was a chance for everyone to kind of really meet each other and stuff. Oh, Barry Sims, Andre Risen, um, Rod right. Martin. Dude, Rod Martin is – yeah, Rod Martin? Is yeah, that, yeah, Right? Linebacker? Yeah. Rod dude, Martin. That dude is he, – he looks – I mean, he's got to be in his 70s, man. He looks like he's kid, like 40, 50 years old, man. And that dude was <laughs> wild, man. He was he was a he was having a good good time, man. He was having a great time. So that night we ended up going out in in downtown Las Vegas, and then Tuesday morning at seven thirty they went to practice, and I kind of had a I kind of had a long night. I was just coming in as they were going to practice, and I'm yeah. like, yeah, I'm gonna I'm gonna go take a nap because I'm thinking. I don't know if I really want to sit out in the sun and with the whole COVID thing, like the players couldn't really interact with the guys. So I took a nap and then at three o'clock we went to the stadium mm -hmm. and we got to take the pictures with our bricks. And then we did a tour of the entire stadium from the locker rooms to the suites to on the field. And that stadium is unbelievable, man. It is like, that every there's so many different like clubs and nightclubs and I know I know in the one end zone in the in, in like floor level yeah. it's almost like Seattle they have a nightclub where it's a suite it's a hundred thousand uh, dollars a yeah. game for this thing right but 
crazy. The, 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 um, and then, so we know where the, the flame is or the big, yeah. big open yeah. area. So they had all the tables out there and they had food being served. And at six o'clock, Mark Davis came in and talked to the team. But first he went through all the players that have passed this past year. And man, I could, it he named off like 20 guys, man. I, I was just thinking like, holy smokes, man. But he paid respect to the former players that had passed away. And then, man, like I got a chance to meet, to reconnect with, there's a guy named Scotty Touche who was a trainer. He's still there. Bob Romanski's the equipment manager. And I don't know if you guys know it, but Bob Romanski, the, the head equipment manager, his dad, we called him Romo. And his dad was the original equipment manager for the Raiders. And he is actually his, that's his, that's his face. That's actually, whoa! he made the Raiders logo. And I used to, he's passed away now since, but he was a big hockey fan. So I loved wearing throwback hockey jerseys. So I'd go and talk to, to Romo. And he said, I've made the Raiders logo. That's actually, a, that's my face in the picture. So his son's the head equipment manager, and it was really cool because he came up to me, and I think it was my rookie year. I was at, like, um, like a youth camp for the Raiders, you know, like you go, and it was, like, through yeah. the NFL, like, um, um, oh, uh, whatever. It was through the NFL, right? Well, Bob Romanski's kids, one, his daughter, I think, was eight, and his son was 10. And his daughter came up to me, and I don't know how I sparked, started a, a conversation with her, but... She sat at the table with me while I was signing autographs and we were sharing Twizzlers together. Dude. And to this day, to this day, I, she she uses 3030 for any like of her like different things she has to have a password for or whatever. Yeah, so, yeah, yeah. So yeah, so she she like to reconnect with them. And when Bob's wife was going through um chemotherapy and stuff, I sent her flowers and it was great to see Bob. It was great to see Scotty Touche. Uh, New York Pete is another guy that is still part of the organization. Mike Taylor is in media. Um, God, who else was in there uh, that I had a chance to reconnect with? Um, obviously, Fudgy's here. You know, Al's secretary. Um, one of the one of the one guys I was really excited to meet, and I want to make sure I got his name correct here. But he's actually the interim president right now. Uh, Dan Ventrelli. So, Mr. Schweiger, I got a prob uh, question to ask you. Hello? Wait, hold on. Hello? Yeah, hi. I got a question to ask you. Yes, sir. Did you play with Nat McCallum? Can't hear you. Can't hear you. Turn your volume up. You're, you're muted. You're muted, brother. I mean, is somebody trying to call you? Is somebody, is somebody trying to call you? Oh, shit. Stupid shit. Wow. Okay, let me... Let me hold on, hold on. Tur turn you, try to turn your volume back up. Hold on, hold on, hold on real quick. Hold on, hold on. Okay, he, he about to come, he's going to come back in. He'll come back okay, in. Okay, because I wanted to know if he played with Napoleon McCallum. And, and the reason being is... When he, when, he, when, he, when he tore his leg up against the Niners? Napoleon McCallum? Yeah. No, Ensign McCallum was, I met him on the Navy base at Long Beach. He was stationed there too. Hold on. Hey. See. Did you play with Napoleon McCallum? Napoleon McCallum? Yeah, Ensign McCallum. McCallum. I met him on the Navy base in Long Beach. Um, I I don't I it doesn't ring a bell. I played with Napoleon Harris. I played with him, uh, but not not who you just said. I'm not Napoleon sure. Napoleon McCallum, running back, Navy. When what do you know when they were playing? I thought it was in the eighties. Uh, oh, no, 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 yes, no. Yes. no, 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 no. McCallum played in the nineties. Uh, Dude, do you, do you I remember, was stationed in Long Beach in the 80s. I met 
uh, Napoleon McCallum on the Navy base. Napoleon McCallum. McCallum. Napoleon McCallum tore his leg up against the Niners on Monday Night Football. It was one of the most gruesome injuries I've ever seen in my life. Um, and he never came back from that. You know what I mean? What 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 happened? Did someone what 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 was it? I mean, what how did he have the injury? Someone was from ta- was tackling him from the back and his leg curled up, but still, bro. If you would have seen this, you, you would have probably threw up. <laughs> like that shit was insane, man. I, I've never seen nothing like that. I met um, Ensign McCallum at the naval base at Long Beach Shipyards. I had to salute him. I was like, Are you nap? And he's like, yeah. <laughs> and I'm like, dude, you're still serving and playing football at the same time. They put him at that duty station and admin so he could play football. Really? Yeah, Napoleon I'm, McCallum. I'm, I'm actually, I'm going to see if I can sign on to my computer so I can search a couple of these people here. Hey, hey while you're doing that, let me ask real quick. Shout out to my brother, Jack. I'm, we're going to get a couple questions in, man, because my brother Stu is out there. Jack asks, Stu, you played for other teams besides the Raiders. Uh, once a Raider, always a Raider. Why Why True. do you love the Raiders, and who was your favorite teammate? Ooh, okay. Um, so I do want to say one more thing. At that dinner, they actually had like a raffle. And what we did when we first got here, there was four helmets, and we all signed these helmets. And I actually, they pulled my name out and I actually got the helmet with everyone's signature on it. And they're going to give me a list of everybody who was, who was here. So when I get that, I'll make sure to read through it. So, but anyway, so. Hi. So, well, sorry. So I, you played for other teams. Said, okay. Once a Raider, always a Raider. Absolutely. Why do you love the Raiders? Well, obviously they gave me my first shot okay. in the NFL. They're the first team to take a chance on me and draft me. You know, I mean. I was the 66 pick overall, so there was a lot of teams that could have picked me up that didn't. Yeah. And I want to say I was the fourth safety taken. So you had Sean Taylor, which he was – God rest his soul. He yeah. he was – that guy was just a, a – Monster. Man. Monster. And then Bob Sanders, who I played against Woo! Bob Sanders in Iowa, uh, got drafted by the Colts. And then Sean Jones from Georgia got drafted by Cleveland. Mm-hmm. And then Madhu Williams from Maryland got drafted by Cincinnati. And then I think it was me. So I was pretty upset. I was, you know, I'm thinking after Sean Taylor, it was, you know, it was a pretty close race with any of those dudes. And I had better stats. I had better times at the combine and everything. So first of all, to get uh, an opportunity to play for the Raiders, you know, I mean, everyone knows the Raiders. I mean, I just... Yeah, I mean, you were a steal. You were a steal. You. <laughs> thank you. I, I appreciate that. No, I uh, remember that draft. I'm like, we just fucked the NFL. <laughs> dude, so here's the funny thing. So, I'll tell my I'll, I'll tell my draft story about the Raiders, right? So, when you go to the Senior Bowl, you're doing interviews with everybody. At the Combine, you're doing interviews with everybody. So you start to get a feeling of kind of what teams are showing the most interest, right? Yeah. The only, here's the deal. The only communication that I had before the draft with the Raiders was this, okay? (laughs) At the NFL Combine, right? So during the day from 6 until 9 o'clock, they have the first floor of the hotel there in Indianapolis, and they clear out all of the like a like a suite, right? They clear the whole room out, and you have a little card, and it has every fifteen minutes who you're supposed to go speak to, and they blow a big horn, and you switch and stuff. So I'd be in there, for instance, like with the Lions, and it's the entire the entire organization that's yeah. in there, and just you, and you have fifteen minutes. They're firing questions off from you, right? Then afterwards, there's a like an open area where you go. And other coaches are just kind of grabbing you real quick, so you go in there. So I'm in there, and all of a sudden, this, this, and I didn't know really the history of the Raiders. Obviously, Charles Woodson, growing up in Michigan, man, oh. Charles Woodson was it. Like yeah. he was the like that dude was everything, right? So I knew Charles Woodson. Terry McDaniel is from Saginaw, so I knew about Terry McDaniel. Thirty-six, one of my favorite, my favorite DBs of all time. Yep, yep. 
And I knew Jack Tatum from the Big Ten, obviously. And this old man, this old, you know, older fellow comes up. He says, he says, hey, come here, son. Come over here, you know. Well, it's Willie Brown. You know, he kind of comes. And I, I didn't know who Willie Brown was. I'll be honest with you, man. I just, I didn't know the history, man. I grew up in Michigan. I was more of a Lions fan, whatever. You know, I knew John Madden and stuff, right? So we sit down. He's got his glasses and barely even looks at me and literally – the most generic questionnaire. He's like, what's your name? I'm like, Stuart Schweiger. He's like, date of birth, what university, what position, three best games, three worst games, and then like your email. And he's like, all right, thanks. And I'm like, I'm definitely not going to freaking Oakland because they're like, <laughs> they, didn't show any Oakland. they didn't show any interest in me at all. But that's the thing with these teams. It's all smoke and mirror. So a lot of times – other teams will actually pump up a guy. They really don't want him. Yeah. But they know that another team just out of spite might steal that draft pick just to piss that team off. Yeah. So so you never really know what the hell is going on, right? Yeah, but at the same time, think about it. Smoke and mirrors to blow other people off. John Gruden does that on a regular basis. Get you to draft this other guy so he can get the guy he wants. Willie Brown sitting there doing generic bullshit. They don't want to promote you at well, all. They want to steal you and get you when no one else is looking. And, 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 and it totally makes sense now. I mean, it totally makes sense now, right? Yeah, they stole you. So, ah. so here, so it's draft day, and that was when the first and second and third rounds were in day one, right? So the draft started at like what noon. And we had rented out uh, where my dad's gym, Old Town Gym in downtown Saginaw, there was a pub and we rented it out, you know, and I had all my family and they say don't have draft day parties because you just don't know, like, you know, and you may not get drafted that day, but I'm like, I feel pretty confident, you know what I'm saying? I should be at least in the first, first day, but it goes all day, right? All of a sudden I'm seeing these other safeties getting drafted and I'm like, Oh boy, it's getting towards like 7 30 at night, right? And everyone's kind of, you know, like, Ugh, like, oh boy. And I remember a, a, a close friend of mine's dad, who's a close friend of mine too, he said, Stu, he calls me Stewie. He said, I rented a limo. He said, take it with your buddies. Just go forget about this for a little while. Just go have some fun, right? So we went around or whatever. I come back and I remember still no call or anything, right? Mm -hmm. So my brother-in-law comes <laughs> out. He says, Stu, he goes, he goes uh, my brother-in-law's brother. He says, man, he goes, it'll happen, dude. Don't worry. And he had a, he worked for Budweiser and he had like this Budweiser, like leather coat or something. He's like, here, man, he goes, this is my lucky coat. So as I'm sliding my right arm into it, the phone rings and it's a pipe. <laughs> and I'm like, oh shit, I'm outside. Right. And I answer it. And it's a female, it's a woman. Hey, is this Stuart Schweiger? And I said, yes. And she says, hello, I just I just wanted yes. to give, give you a call. It was, I thought it was, it wasn't. I oh. thought I was telling it was Amy Trask for years. And when I had Amy on my radio program, I told her that story. She's like, Stu, I didn't call you. So I don't know who it, who it was. <laughs> but they're like, I'm thinking like, dude, is someone like playing a very bad freaking trick right here? You know what I'm saying? Like, yeah. first of all, the Raiders, who I'm like, they wanted nothing to do with me. And then it's some girl saying, I want to be the first to congratulate you on being drafted, you know, 66th overall by the Oakland Raiders. Well, then in the bar, it was, you know, it's delayed or whatever. And then I hear the whole bar just like cheering. It, it erupted or whatever. And I'm talking to her. And she says, you know, here's, here's your flight information. Congratulations. We'll see you Thursday. Hung up the phone and, you know, shit, we had a good time, partied that night, had a great time. And, Thursday, I flew out for my first mini camp. And, uh, you know, so with the Raiders, right? So I know this too. My agent told me that Al, every draft has like a guy that's like his pick. I love, I love this story because we talked about it. Did we? We did. No, didn't no, no, we? Hold on, hold on. A lot of people tell it. Hear the tell it. Tell so that I was, I was Al's guy for that draft, right? Because 
obviously uh, you got to have speed. You got to have speed back there, right? So at the end of the first mini camp, you know, he's at practice and I got a, I, I ended mini camp with an interception mm-hmm. and I have that picture, which I showed up and I, Al says, Swagger, come over here. And I said, yes, Mr. Da- it was Mr. Davis. You did that. That was, it was Mr. Davis. You didn't call him anything but Mr. Davis. <laughs> no, I mean, Willie Brown and them, I don't even think call him Al. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. He stole your ass in the well, draft. I came over there. And he says, man, he goes, that ball just always seems to find your hand, Schweiger, you know? And I I know that he, again, having him kind of uh, put his stamp on me, Yeah, I was like thinking like, holy smokes, man. You know what I mean? Like that's, that's a, there's some pressure that comes with that, but it was also a great honor. So the Raiders, I spent the majority of my career in Oakland, obviously, then I start going to other teams, and I didn't have – I wasn't there long enough to establish a relationship in the community and with my teammates like I did in Oakland, right? So yeah. that's why I love the Raiders, just because it's it's my first team. I mean, it's – you know, I mean, they drafted me. Okay. I, yeah, but Mr. Hold on, hold on, Schweiger, okay. you know what? It could have been a worse phone call. Hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on real quick. Hold on real quick. Because it was the second part of that question. Shout out to Jack. Fa- Who was your favorite teammate? Oh, man. You know, I was a guy. I was I was friends with everybody, right? I was always kind of – and in the league, you know, it's a business. And they always say you don't have to like your teammate. But, I mean, if you don't like the guy, you're not, you're, you're not going to play as hard for a dude if you don't like him, <clears throat> right? I mean, yeah. I – I always like I loved my teammates and I I worked my ass off because I didn't want to let them down. But if it's some guy you don't like, like that, I, I don't em. think you could. <laughs> what? What's that? Like fuck them. <laughs> yeah, yeah, right. I mean, so not everybody liked each other, but I was always kind of like the dude that, like, I would literally in Alameda on Bay Form Island, like if you make a left out of the out of out of uh, what twelve twenty Harbor Bay Parkway, I think the, the the address. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. And you make a left and you go right into that neighborhood. I lived on a cul-de-sac. Yep. And after games, literally like flying home, we'd be like, "Hey guys, let's just have a house party at my house." So my cul-de-sac, dude. There's you're talking Ferraris and Bentleys, and you'd have Derek Burgess and Barry Sims and Cooper Carlisle, Robert Gallery, and and Randy Moss, like old school, like drinking beer and smoking cigarettes outside and stuff like that. So I always brought everyone together, right? Yeah. So, but my favorite teammates, I mean, I can't just say one. My obviously Gerard Cooper. I mean, me and him were. I know you and Cooper hella tight. You've told me mad stories on the phone about. <laughs> yeah, I got some good ones with Cooper, man. That dude was, that dude was a one of the best teammates you could ever have. Yeah. yeah. Um. Ray Buchanan, who now I've reconnected with. I love it. I love that because we were just talking about him too. I was just talking to him today because his son, his youngest son played corner at Tennessee and he Mm -hmm. put himself into the transfer portal and he's taking visits right now. And I'd sent his information over to Purdue Ron English as the defensive back coach. And I'm like, bro, like has Purdue talked to your son yet, Ray or whatever? And yeah. he's like, no, they haven't. I'm like, give me his information, and we're going to send that shit through. So Ray Buchanan was the guy hey, man. that taught me how to be a professional. Yeah. Well, not, Mr. Not so, much, not so much football. I mean, he was he knew football, but it was how to conduct yourself as a professional before games, after games, in the community, how you travel. <laughs> so actually, that, that um, first – that first bye week, my rookie year, Ray Buchanan was like, hey, Stu, listen, me and my wife, Charles Woodson, Marcus Anderson, and two of, I think Charles is maybe girlfriend or I don't know, whatever. We're heading to Vegas. Do you want to come with us? And I'm going, uh, I guess, right? You know, he goes, I'll just get a plane ticket. Everything else is taken care of. We're staying at Caesars Palace. So me and my wife flew in. They had someone escort us. They were waiting for us up to the, like a penthouse suite at Caesar's Palace. And Ray's like, hey, listen, man, we're out gambling a little bit. Go enjoy yourself. Have fun. We'll meet up for dinner later and go out. 
So yeah. I'm at the roulette table. I don't gamble. I, I just don't. But I was playing the roulette wheel, right? And Ray calls me up. He's like, hey, Stu, how's everything going? You know, dinner's at whatever. And, you know, you gamble. But I said, yeah, man. I said, me and Christy, I said, I said we're playing roulette. I'm like, we're up. He's like, oh, how much are you up? I'm like, we're up 180 bucks. And I'm like, you know, because I'm still out of college, basically. Yeah, yeah. Right? You know? Yeah. yeah. And Ray and I'm, and Ray's like, oh man, cool man. He's like, good, good, good. He goes, I'm up too. I go, oh man, how much are you up? He's like, I'm up eighty two thousand. And I'm like, oh, <laughs> all right, okay, <laughs> I see. All right, you know. But so Ray yeah, Buchanan reconnecting with him has been huge, man. Just absolutely amazing. But Namdi Aswan, man. I mean, Namdi Aswan would cut my hair. Like I'd go to his house and he would cut my hair, dude. Me, him. And Akbar and Chris Carr and Gerard Cooper after game sometimes on a Sunday would just we would just literally just sit there and just talk and just laugh and just have a good time. Um, That's fire. Me man. and Derek Burgess were very close, very 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 close. He was the only guy. So from high school, I think I had five of my friends come to my wedding. Me and my wife got married in the Virgin Islands. U.S. This was a destination wedding. Yeah. I had and, and I I had I invited I think six of my college teammates and maybe six NFL teammates. Out of college and NFL, the only teammate of mine that showed up was Derek Burgess with his wife. And unfortunately, a couple of years after my wedding, his wife passed away in a car accident. But mm. me and Derek were were really, 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 really close. Yeah. Really close. Um I would probably have to say Gerard Cooper. Would probably be if if I had to pick one, but Fabian Washington, we were really close. And Derek Gibson, we were close. And I loved Shane Leckler and Sebastian Janikowski. And I was close with Jake Grove and Robert Gallery because they were in my draft class. And I played against Gallery in college. You know, we were, <clears throat> we were Playboy All-Americans together. Um, Randy Moss was a, a – actually, you know what? Warren Sapp. I, I have a, a really good relationship with Warren Sapp. You know, and Warren Sapp, man, he's – that dude is one of – as far as a football IQ goes, that dude is so smart, like unbelievably smart. So my rookie year, I didn't get a car. Me and my wife, we packed up a U-Haul, had her Saturn eye on. I put it on the, a little trailer. We drove out to California, and I, I bought a bicycle. And I would ride my bike into work for the first <laughs> year, right? Yeah. I would literally, I would literally like drive into the facility, like the doors would open up, and I'd like skirt in and like put my bike like in the locker room or whatever. And after practice, I remember uh, Warren Sapp was like, Stu, let's go and grab my bike. And that was when the uh, Hummer truck first came out, you know, with, with the back. Mm -hmm. He said, Come on. He threw my bike in the back, and he's like, Let's go. And he would give me rides home from, from, uh, from practice. And I still talk to him this day, you know, and it's like he would he he was great, but I <laughs> I remember this when I got to training camp, right? Because I don't think Warren was at the mini camp. And I got to training camp but again. I it was speak when spoken to, man. I didn't go up and talk to any of the vets like if they came up and said some stuff to me, I would answer, but I just kept to myself, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, I'm watching boy. everything, but I'm getting dressed, right? And Warren Sapp goes, oh, hell no. He's like, I thought you were one of the trainers, bro. Uh-uh, what? You know? And then when I went out there, you know, I earned everybody's respect because they knew that I was going to bring that funk. And that's how you get your your, your teammates' respect, right? Because it's special teams, dude. And you watch special teams with everybody. And that's another thing. Joe Avanzano... Do you remember him, the special yeah, teams yeah. coach who played? Who was, I just remember seeing him during the Dallas Cowboys Super Bowls and his white hair flying everywhere. Like a motherfucker. He looked yes. like Doc. He looked like Doc from Back to the Future, right? <laughs> Hell yeah, he did. But he had a meeting with us. He says, listen, guys, I'm going to tell you this right now. You, you want to make this team? You come through me. You ain't getting on. Them coaches don't trust you right now. You got to get on special teams and then – you prove yourself to me, then you can go on with the other coaches. So you're going to be – just because you're some college All-American, you ain't, don't think you're not going to be playing special teams. So I just busted my ass for him, and, like, 
that like running down on kickoff and punts and being in the meet room when everybody's in there, the vets and everyone, that's how they know who you are. Like all of a sudden, if you pop off on film like that, they're like, okay, I, I, I can, I can mess with this dude. But yeah. if you flinch and if you back down and you avoid contact and stuff, they will call you out and you will be gone, 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 dude. So like, Joe Alvizano was was a guy that again was like, listen, guys, if you want to make this team, it comes through me, dude. It comes through me, yeah. and it, it sets this, like I was like I was by him, Joe. Whatever special teams you need me to be on, dude, I'm on whatever the hell special teams you need me to be on. Um, Jerry Porter, Doug Gabriel, Courtney Anderson, um, Lamont Jordan, and I were close. Aaron Brooks was a great guy. Uh, oh, oh, QB, QB from from New Orleans. Me and Dante Culpepper were very close. His wife, Kim, and his kids. And when I, I played with him in Detroit as well, Dante Culpepper. Um, Tyrone Wheatley, coming from Michigan again, dude. Tyrone Wheatley, dude, like. Monster. Monster. Monster, monster, monster. Yeah. And I knew, like, you know, if you're a dog as a rookie, when you're getting kind of hazed by the big name players. Mm -hmm. Like I remember Tyrone Wheatley was like, he's like, come here, Stu. You're my rookie, dude. Come over here, like cutting my hair and all that stuff. But it was like, bro, I'm getting my hair cut by Tyrone Wheatley, you know, and like Ray Buchanan and stuff like this. It wasn't like some, not to say like practice squad dude, but sometimes guys just because they're not a rookie and they played one year, even though they didn't play, they try to like, hey, come here, rook. And it's like, dude, who the fuck are you, man? Like, Chill out, man, like that. You know what I'm saying? Sometimes just because you're older doesn't mean you can boss some dudes around. So if you're getting hazed by um, by the big boys, yeah. you know, what, they used, what they'd have you do is sing songs or, yeah, you know. Yeah, um, all that other shit. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, so what we did, me and Cody Spencer. So Cody Spencer was my roommate. He was a he was a linebacker out of North Texas, a seventh-round pick. Mm-hmm. So what I came up with, I said, you know, instead of singing your fight song and stuff like this, I said, let's do this. I, I actually wrote like a poem of like kind of dogging on like the older players. But if we put it together in a good way, man, they were rolling, dude. We had that whole place rolling. And a matter of fact, I think. Hey, Stu, hey hold on real quick, real quick, real quick. OG, I love you, bro. You look like you're falling asleep. Like, like, like. I, I think I thought you were like to the point where you just I can't see him. I, no, no, no. I, pull back up. You have you have the link. Pull back up, brother. Um, and real quick, one question, real quick, before you finish that. And you don't have to. You don't have to. You don't have to. You don't have to say it. But this is the question from AB. Shout out to you, brother. He said, "Why did Can't Miss Gallery struggle so bad? Was it because of the mental health shit?" Hold on. Say 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 it again. You broke up why, a little bit. Why did why why did Gallery struggle so bad? So Robert, yeah. So here's the thing. I was a four-year starter in the Big Ten, right? So I knew like everybody, right? And all of a sudden, senior year, I start hearing about Robert Gallery. I had never really heard of the dude, but he was 350 pound, strong as hell. And he was fast, but like, no offense against Robert, but when mm -hmm. we played them, like Sean Phillips, uh, uh, Cliff, uh, Cliff Averill, uh, Ray Edwards, like monsters, they were they were destroying dudes. So like, Averill, damn, bro, dude, oh, dude, I, if I went through my like, uh, Anthony Spencer and oh, dude, my my senior year, we had eleven draft picks. We were tied with Miami, and I think Oklahoma had twelve. Mm -hmm. Like we do, we had freaking dogs, man. So I was surprised when everyone was blowing up gallery. Cause I'm like, I played four years with the guy and I never really knew who he, like I never, it wasn't like a dude that stuck out to me. Yeah. So yeah. when he came to Oakland, I don't, I, I honestly, what it was, it was the coaches. It was the coaching and they didn't have, Good offensive line coaches. And you think Art Shell, Jackie Slater, Irv Eatman, 
And I'd say, Robert, what in the hell? What what's going on in those meat rooms? He goes, you know what? When we're asking those guys, hey, with this, with you know, when the linebackers blitzing, should I step? In? Oh, just block them. Yeah, but how do I pick up and what's the just block the guy? I'm thinking, bro, that you know, sometimes great great players, stuff just comes real easy to them. Yeah, like they yes. just naturally, you're like, dude, I need some more technique. Like we always used to say this to the young rookies coming in, Charles Woodson is one of the best football players to okay. ever play. Ever. But we said, do not, do not. Because I always say this, if you're going to emulate somebody, emulate the best, right? Hmm. We're like, do not do anything that he does. Because it'll get you cut. Because he is so unorthodox. Yeah. The way he <laughs> does stuff, like, you will get cut, dude. Like, the stuff that he would do. I remember... We're playing. I'm out there playing with them, and all of a sudden, I'm like, I know he's supposed to be over there, but he's like on my side of the field, and I'm like, oh, shit, should I go over there? Or does he does he know what's going on? Like, but he would just know where stuff was at. You know what I'm saying? So like, <laughs> you you can't sometimes like again, like what's my technique and man to man, dude, just lock the guy down. Well, yeah, should I step with my left? Should I back? Where am I looking at, dude? Just just lock the guy down. It's like. I need more technique than that, right? So the offensive line was one of our – probably one of our weakest links, I think, during my time there. I mean, I I, I would say it was coaching, cool. and oh, then that- it was also confidence. When you start digging into a player's confidence and he starts second-guessing himself, and you got to think this, number two pick, he's, you know, big, strong, and it's not working for him. Fans yeah. are jumping on them. They move positions, put them at guard. And I think it just it just got with his head. And it, it's just slowly after that, when you start nipping at a guy's confidence, man, it's just tough, you know. But, again, I think he didn't have the coaching that I think he needed at that level. Because when he came from Iowa, Kirk Ferentz, he's the most winningest big coach in the Big Ten. He puts offensive linemen in the NFL. Like, that's his thing. So he came from a great coach. And then he got here, and sometimes there's not a whole lot of coaching. Mm. Like, there's managing players and kind of showing him a, a script and kind of just facilitating stuff. But, like, again, my greatest coach was Chuck Pagano because he coached. Like, he taught you how to watch film and prepare and obviously Clayton Lopez was my first coach and I love him because he brought me into Detroit, but Chuck Pagano, that's when I had my best years under him because he was a great freaking coach. So long story short, sorry. I just think it was his confidence. His confidence was chipping away and he kind of blew up quick and maybe him being the number two pick, maybe he wasn't a number two pick kind of guy. Yeah. I got you. Let me let me ask you this real quick. Have you got to meet any of our new players? This, this, this no, no. Okay. I haven't. I I know when guys went to practice yesterday. I know again they were there, but there was no there was no interaction with with any of the any of the players that are there now. There there wasn't any interaction with it at all. Okay. Okay. Yeah. I get it. I get it. So. Outside of what you guys done, man, what, what you got going out out there in Vegas, man? Like, I, <laughs> hey, man, I had a good time, dude. I, I again, man, I'm like, I'm like, hey, Stu, where are we going tonight? What are we doing? What's the plan? <laughs> just because me and Cooper were always the guys that we just we just had a good time, man. Like we 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 were never worried about where we're going. I don't want to go here, and I don't want this, and blah blah blah. You know what I mean? So. Oh, here's the other thing too, guys. So a, a very close friend of mine, Kevin Kevin Corez, I flew him out here with me, and he owns a production company. Mm-hmm. So he actually filmed this entire deal, and I, I'm going to be able to show you guys. Like he filmed me being interviewed. So also too, there's a production company, part of the Oakland Raiders. It's like the history of the Raiders, mm-hmm. and they've been doing this for three years, filming getting going and getting guys and getting players stories and interviewing guys and getting old news clippings and, and like everything they can get for the, for the, like it's another thing that no other team's doing. Yeah. 
there. So when I was getting interviewed, my buddy was like filming me getting interviewed. So I've got some really, really cool stuff from walking around the stadium to just hanging out here at the hotel, just um, meeting guys and just, it's some really cool stuff, man. I, I'm really excited for him to put everything together so you guys can see some of it. It's going to be really, really cool. Is it still weird to realize that? Oh, go, go, go ahead, OG. Go ahead. Go ahead. Just a question. Playing under yeah. Art Shell. Okay. The one of the greatest offensive linemen in the game. <laughs> you had to deal with Coach Shell. <laughs> what was it like? being under him because I'm going to tell you right now, I'm sure his expectations were not low. Wait, what'd you say at the end there? What'd you say? How'd you, how do you, how'd you end that? I'm sure his expectations were not low. Here, here's the thing. And be honest though. You know how we do, bro. <laughs> you know how we do still. You had to play under our shell. What was it like? Again, again, as a head coach, there's no, defensively, there's not a lot of interaction between the defense and the head coach. Mm -hmm. My head coach is Rob Ryan. You know what yeah. I'm saying? Like, that's who I dealt with, right? You didn't, like, I, I like Norv Turner because he drafted me, and I, I like talking to Norv and that and this. And But when Art Shell came, there wasn't a whole lot of interactions between Art Shell and me, okay? And there were times where some of the way, some of the way that he approached and talked to some of the other coaches um, was very, I just a little condescending, uh, real. inappropriate. And it created a divide where I'm going like, damn, like this dude's kind of disrespecting like a coordinator. And I remember like, it was like a team meeting and, and, and Rob Ryan came in like maybe 30 seconds, like just coming in. And Art Shell called him out in front of everybody. And I had never seen a head coach reprimand a freaking another one, somebody on his staff in front of the team like that. Especially not because of a dude just coming in a couple minutes. Like he, Rob Ryan was like, uh, and like just disrespect. And I, I didn't like that. I didn't like that. And the other thing I didn't like was, he was, we wore pants the entire season. He was old school, man. He was like other teams, like dead. I'm, I'm sitting there thinking, okay, man, the Denver Broncos have hat days where they go to practice and Shanahan, they're just running around in hats. And I'm thinking, we wore full pads the entire season and we're two and 14. And the Denver Broncos are in hat days. And they're going to the freaking playoffs and stuff. And I'm going, man, like, I don't know if that system works. Yeah. And then he brought in his offensive coordinator was the offense. The offensive coordinator's claim to fame that he brought in was he installed the first offense in Madden. That was his thing. And then he was running hotels for like the last 10 years. He brought him in. And I'm like, dude, they're just. The, the 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 again the coaching and it was just it just seems so outdated so here's the other thing too so we went to kansas city we fly in you know coming from the west to the east we fly in on friday mm -hmm. okay? and kurt morrison was friends with a, a receiver i think something named webb that was in kansas city and friday night we you know guys step out because Friday night in Oakland, guys go out, guys have parties, guys, whatever, right? You know, so we go out and there are a ton of guys out, ton of guys out, right? Me and Cooper, we we're actually hanging out with some of the, the Kansas City Chiefs guys and, you know, just hanging out. You know, we we're having some cocktails and stuff, you know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And we're going back to the hotel and we go up and each hotel floor has like a, a security guard on it, you know, to make sure that fans aren't coming up or just whatever. So we come up and we're just thinking like, okay, when the guy says, who are you guys? What are, the, what are you guys doing or whatever? We're like, I'm Stuart. This is Cooper. And he's like, you, you, I'm, telling our, I'm telling the coach that you guys are out past whatever. And we're like, that's not your job. That, that's not your job. And I tried, to, I tried to get Cooper like into the hotel room. I'm like, Cooper, let's just shut the door from this guy. Just shut the door. 
Yeah. And all of a sudden I hear Cooper go, who in the fuck do you think you're talking to? And I'm like, oh, no. Like, <laughs> so that next morning, right, Chuck Pagano says, hey, Coop, it's Stu. Dude, well, well, you know, hey, I just want to let you know, man, Art Shell is not happy about you guys going out. Yeah. But there were there were 30 other dudes that went out, right? That mm -hmm. he knew about. But that mo he, he had a team meeting and he says, I got guys putting themselves ahead of this team. I got captains, and Gerard Cooper was a captain. I got captains coming in late after curfew. He took Cooper's jersey in front of everybody and ripped the captain patch off of it. And I'm going. Holy Listen, shit. did we did 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 Cooper or me do anything in a game or at practice that that would warrant for you to call us out in front of everybody like that? So then get this right. That game in 2006, I had my fuck my best game ever, right? I had my best game ever because again, we're professionals. Yeah, we go out on Friday night, you can handle yourself on Sunday, mm -hmm. whatever. So get this right. So I remember Cooper's because no, and, and here's what here's what Art Shell said. I'm gonna find you guys to the max. You guys, that I'm finding you guys to just overdoing it again. Just again, condescending, disrespectful. And I know it's Art Shell, but come on, man. Like you don't need to talk to us that way, right? So I had one of my best games ever, dude. I'm tackling Larry Johnson one on one. I'm flying across the field. I'm everywhere, dude. Right. We come in Monday morning, Rob Ryan pulls up the screen. He says, hey, guys, I know I know we had one player on Sunday that wanted to play. He said, Stu, he goes, I don't know what you and Cooper did on Friday night when you went out. He says, but you can do that every fucking weekend if you play like that. <laughs> right? But so I'm thinking, I'm thinking, you know, our shell's not going to whatever. Ten grand he took out of my check before tax. Ten thousand wow. dollars. Not because oh. I screwed up in a game, because we came in a little bit after a curfew on a night where in Oakland, we're at our houses. You can do whatever you want. But later that season, we're playing Cincinnati. Randy Moss, and I love I'm telling you guys right now, I know I love Randy Moss. And I'll talk about Randy was one of the best teammates you could ever have. That dude would rent out movie theaters for the team. He would rent out bowling alleys to have team activities, bring the family there. He was funny. He was he was a, he was a great teammate, but he had no help. So Kerry Collins is throwing these balls up. There's no other people doing anything. So he'd have three or four guys hitting the shit out of him. Man, he was getting beat up. So that Cincinnati game, he got hurt, went in the locker room at, in the second quarter. So we go in at halftime. Randy <laughs> Moss's locker is empty. We're like. What the hell? What? Where Randy, where Randy go? That dude went in there, called his private jet. He didn't want to be there. His jet picked him up. I we didn't see him till Wednesday, right? So he leaves the game, misses film on Monday, misses everything like that. Didn't get fined. Didn't get fined. So there's a lot of dissension then. And I'm thinking, dude, if you're gonna be if if you're gonna be a hard ass. And you want to find people, that's cool, but you do it to everybody, man. And you don't call and it again, man. I know it 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 was, always, crazy. It, was always, it was always kind of with the white dudes. I mean, yeah. just, I'm just being honest with you, man. <laughs> so was, there was bro. a lot of dissension back. It was. It was. Now, and that was my best year I ever had was playing for Art Shell. Not because because of Chuck Pagano. So when I got fined for hitting Tony Gonzalez, I didn't get fined for illegal hit. I got fined for taunting, for standing over Tony Gonzalez, right? But I'm staring at his eyes were going sideways and shit. I'm looking at him like, hey, hey, Stu, to this day, look, it, it's cool now because I say, like, Stu is my friend. This is my friend. Absolutely. I show my sons, I say, look at my friend. This is why I love the Raiders because this type of shit right here. Tony Gonzalez, like, bro, that, that was not no, I don't give a fuck, legal hit, but no, no, that's football. And you dog walk that guy, man. Yeah. yeah. Well, I told you. Tony Gonzalez is not a bad thing, bro. 
at all. <laughs> Listen, Tony Gonzalez is arguably one of the best tight ends to ever play the game. Yeah, okay? ever. But I had his number, dude. I got more plays than me knocking his ass around and hitting him. And Tony comes up to me during one game and says, Stu, man, can you stop hitting me in my legs? I, go, <laughs> I said, Tony. Go ask yourself, Tony. I said, Tony, what would you just say? Stu, come on, dog. Can you? I said, oh, sure, Tony. I said, let me know when you're going to run a seven round. I'll just fall down and you can score on me. Bro, that's fucking. Uh, I said, oh, Tony. Bro. I said, listen, man. I said, hey, yo, bro. I gotta check out. I got a, uh, I got an early meeting in the morning. I'm sorry, and I love to talk with you and Stu, but I gotta check. I gotta go. Okay. I will. Oh, hey, guys, it was an absolute pleasure and an honor. Me and Stu, we'll thank you so much. It was great to meet you. You. T- um. What was I saying now? I don't even fucking remember. Oh, no. So <laughs> here's, here's the thing, though. Again, so respect. Like, so I said, to, I said, Tony, now that you told me that, I'm going to try to break your fucking knees every play. I'm just telling you, I am coming for your fucking kneecaps on every fucking play. Just be, and you know I'm coming, Tony. I said, are you seriously? I, I said, you're, you don't play on my fucking team. Yeah. What the fuck, man? But here's the thing. The that, year before. Why would I, he say that? I don't know. That's some weird shit, bro. Like, like you guys play in the same fucking division. Like, like, like what? But get this, though. The year before, the 2006 Super Bowl in Miami, my agency was CAA. My agent was Ben Dogger, one of the top agents or whatever. They, they had a party. Yeah. And this thing. I mean, we're in the VIP because my buddy played for the Lions. He's friends with Kid Rock, and Paul Rudd is there, and uh, Fergie and Scarlett Johansson. Well, Tony Gonzalez was in with his brother, so I'm like, you know, I'm just gonna go. I'm just gonna go, and you know, hey, Tony, man, what's up, bro, or whatever, right? Yeah. So I walk up to him, I tap him, he turns around, he goes, "Hey, man, I'm not signing autographs." And I said, "I said, Tony, what the fuck did you just say to me, motherfucker?" Oh, 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 Stu, and his brother was laughing. He's like. Oh, Stu, I'm, you know I'm just messing. I said, no, Tony, that's some bullshit. I said, you better tell your fucking fuck-ass brother to stop his fucking laughing, too. He's like, Stu, for real, and I walked away. Next time I seen him was the game when I knocked his ass the fuck out. Oh, so, dude, let's go! Don't fuck try you. and play me, dude, because I'm like, you know who the fuck I told him. Like, I've been sticking, I've been fucking your ass up for the last three years when we play you, dude. Okay, not once were you ever dunking on the goalpost when I was around, dude. You weren't doing it. And then you're telling me to slow down. Hey, man, can you take it easy on me? You're coming too hard. Like, are you- hey, hey, hold on, hold on. Still, 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 still. Let me, let me, hold on. Stop talking real quick, bro. Real quick, real quick. Bro, you are a goat. That shit you said is that that shit is fucking crazy. He said, you are not dunking on fucking goalposts when I was around. I was- dude. He looked at me and said, no, I'm not, and turned away. And his brother started. I said, what in the fuck did you just say to me, Tony? <laughs> oh, Stu. You know, I said, no, oh, Stu, me, motherfucker. I'm like, yeah, dude. Talk dude, that shit, man. Dude, I'm telling you right now. But again, <laughs> they see me. And I, again, I'm just a normal white dude. I'm a normal white dude, right? I ain't got no tattoos. I don't have earrings. I don't try to walk around and be something that I'm not. I'm from Saginaw, which, again, I Saginaw and Flint and Detroit, it was always murder capital. I hate saying I'm from the, whatever, but, dude. Murder cappy. I'm not just some white dude that's just going to take some shit from the brothers because a lot of times that's what white dudes do. They kind of get punked a little bit. Yeah, 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 yeah. And I, I don't play that shit, man. I do not play that shit because I've had it around this time too. Man, talk that shit. Where, where because, and I've had this shit too, man, like where me being, again, a normal looking white dude that went to Purdue, oh man, this dude didn't have to work for shit. This dude doesn't know what it's like to grind. But this dude from Florida... With the dreads and tattoos and gold teeth, that dude know I like that dude over there. 
You know he went to a private school and his parents are both doctors, right? You know that shit, right? Hey, talk you, that Eminem from Eight Mile shit. Do you, I'm like, do you know that that guy over there? I'm like, oh, oh, because he's got dreads and he's got gold teeth. He's he's from the streets. He's hood. Yeah. I'm thinking, dude. I I just I don't play that shit because they'll test you, man. They'll they will fucking they will test you. Yeah. And, well, I'm just saying, uh, like, it's it's a it's a it's it's almost like just kind of seeing what the and a lot of times I'm just saying, man, white dudes they'll back the fuck down, man, yeah. or they'll try to be, hey, yo, what's up, homie? Yeah, do, you know, do this bullshit, and I'm like, Here, <laughs> get this, you know what my big the, this weekend, the biggest compliment I got from anybody was Stu. You are you you have have not changed. You have not changed at all, and that's what it's about, though. That because I see I, I've I've seen, I, I've seen these dudes, and I'm just like, man, just be yourself, man. Like you don't need to like like prove yourself or act like something you're not or whatever, dude. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like, I, I just, I just, I, I never liked that shit. I never liked it. And again, I, I'm just, the way America is now and people talking about white privilege and this and that, I'm like, dude, I was the only white guy in the room for years, for years. I had to go above and beyond to prove that I was athletic, right? I had nothing. I had nothing given to me at all. And I've been on the other side of where when I was trying to get a coaching job, I specifically did not get hired because I was white and they needed to hire a black guy in that position. And that was the only reason I didn't get that job. And that's what they told me. That was the reason because I did a four day interview at Coastal Carolina. Everything was sewed up, but they had two African-American coaches on the staff. And that Sunday, one got hired by Nebraska. So they needed to add in another African-American guy. And that was the only, I said, how many times have you ever been segregated against because of the color of your skin or been the only person in a room that you're, oh, how do I say this? Um, the uh, only, the, the only person of your ethnic ethnicity in a room and been able to compete and do it. So when people, here's the thing, man, I don't want to get on the whole race thing, but, when I'm talking with my with my teammates, and you know what, I I hung out with all the black guys just because for one they're funner. You know, the white dudes are usually sitting there drinking beer, playing cards. I'm like, dude, I want to go to the club <laughs> and have a good time. You know what I mean? So, um, um, what the hell? Okay, look, so look, first, first, look, hold on. Let me say this real fast, real quick, before you get into your spill. I've talked to Stu. I know anything that you're saying. It's 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 not racially driven. It's no none of that shit. Like no, not it, at all. Yeah. So I, I I all I'm saying is, brother, I know like where your heart lies, and and, and you're good. You know what I mean. So I don't want anybody to think like no, well, no. I I, I know. I know. I I 100 appreciate that. 100 yeah. percent appreciate it. But the funny thing is, no, I get more flack from white people than any everybody else. How could you? How could you ask that question? Oh my God! I'm like. I'm talking to the guy, man. I'm like, dude, we're having a conversation as adults. Like, I'm t we're talking about real yeah. life shit here, okay? Like, yeah. back the fuck off. We're fine, man. Mm -hmm. But it's it like they like freak the fuck out, and I'm thinking, and they, well, what do you know, Stu? And I'm like, again, I just go back to, I can relate because I've again I've been segregated against. You know what I'm saying? So like, like I've I've been on the other side. It sucks, dude. It sucks. So. I, I have, and again, all I'm doing, man, is I'm just telling my story. That's just what, that was my experience. That right was up. just my experience, man. Yeah. I'm not saying it's right or wrong or indifferent, but that was, I know how sometimes, man, being. So, real quick, real quick. You got a drink over there? Uh, Yeah. Grab it. Come on. Cheers, my brother. Hey, love you, man. I'm very proud of you. Out there killing it in Vegas right now, man. I love to see that shit, brother. Hey, cheers to my brother Stu. Everybody in the comment section, 
Shout out our brother Stu. We are still I appreciate like it. No, 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 man. Everyone, everyone's been awesome, man. And I can't wait to show you some of the stuff that I filmed out here. And I know people were talking about the first game. I will open up the invite to January. Is it second or third when the when Oakland plays Indianapolis? I'll be out there, dude. Everybody, hit me up, please. Oh. Hey, fuck I want to see everybody. I, I am coming to stay at your house, motherfucker. I, I'm, I'm, I'm staying in the basement. Let's go, dude. Let's go. Let's yeah, go. I, Anyone I'm, who's going to that game, please, man. Like, all the, and then what was cool today when because they're all gonna fly in Friday, so everyone from the organization that I'm gonna meet up with all of them and do the like hell yes, dude. Come in, come in. Let's let's you know hell yeah, we want to see you or whatever. So anyone that's gonna be in India, go to that game. Let me know, man. I'm gonna be. Around. Have you ever been to the Lucas Oil? I haven't been out there yet. It's it's cool, dude. It's like it looks like a big. Uh, it looks like a big stall, like a horse stall, because of the Colts or whatever. So it yeah, looks yeah, like a big yeah. barn. It's super, super, super nice. And now that who's our quarterback? Wentz is out the whole year, bro. I I think they're trying to get. They have Easton. He he's a rookie kind of situation. Um, they're done. Well, see, I had heard some. I saw somebody said that Mariota, the, the oh. Colts. That's a, not lot, true. a lot. Of, a lot of. I, I did a video on that. Um, a lot of rumors about because they, they, Indianapolis wanted Marcus Mariota even before he resigned or before we restructured his contract. Okay. So, so there was a situation where they already wanted him, but now it's like the most we'll get is maybe a third. Why give up? the best backup quarterback in the league. If DC goes down, we need Mariota around. Absolutely. Yeah. And the other thing is too, is coaches. Here's the thing with those two quarterbacks, coaches, when they're doing their game plans, they have to account for Mariota maybe playing. So that just takes extra time for the defensive coordinators yes. that time away from what they, you know, on other things, they got to focus on David Carr and Marcus Mariota because if he comes in there, they better know what the fuck's going on, dude. Because obviously that kid, he's like again, he's my favorite player. So it just <laughs> adds in another element that defensive coordinators have to worry about. Stu, now even Phillip Rivers is saying, like, hey, I may come back at some point. You know, I hate Phillip Rivers. I hate Phillip Rivers. Fuck that shit. I hate Phillip Rivers. Okay. I played with him at the Northeast, no, the senior bowl. Uh -huh. Um, he was, he won MVP of the game and all this stuff. And I remember I was in the elevator with him and he's got like 20 kids or some shit. You know what I mean? I don't know what his deal is, but I'm listening to him talk and I'm just like, okay, so get, no, so get this. So <laughs> my rookie year in San Diego, right? We're down in San Diego. Yeah. Obviously I know a lot of the charters. I told you that. Drew Brees, yes, yes. Um, yes. Nick Hardwick, uh -huh. Sean Phillips, mm -hmm. uh, Goff was an offensive lineman. Uh, Clint Hart, um, you know, um, Quentin Jammer. Like I knew all these guys, right? And so I'm running down on kickoff, and I don't remember if I might have a guy might have got me pretty good or something like that, or you know, I don't know what it was. I don't know if. I, a guy caught me or something, and I kind of fell. And Philip Rivers was on the side, like, "Oh, Stu, you got lit up, dog. You got fucking lit up, man. Look at you." I'm like, "What the fuck?" I'm like, "Dude, you're not even on the goddamn field, and you're talking to me." So I went <laughs> next kickoff. I got Sean Phillips. You know, Sean Phillips. Was my, oh. dude, that's my homeboy. I said, "Sean," and it's on the side. Like I'm getting ready to run down on kickoff. I said, "Sean, come over here." I said, "You get you over there, and you go get." You go tell your boy Philip Rivers, right? He goes, okay. And he went and got Philip and brought him to me. <laughs> I said, he said, Stu wants to talk to you. I said, Philip, you want to keep talking? I said, I don't know you like that, dude. And I said, first of all, I'm on the field playing and you're holding the fucking clipboard, dude. Okay. And I said, if we, I said, after the game, come find me again so we can talk about what the fuck it was you were laughing at. Yeah. And Sean was just going, don't fuck with Stu, man. And like, <laughs> Cause he's my boy before fuck you know Philip Rivers. He's like, dude, I'm just kind of like, I'm just kind of joking about stuff. Cause you know how he was always, always running his mouth. Always, yeah, yeah. Always. Hey, 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 real quick. Cause while you out there in Vegas, shout out to Robert Hicks, man. Shout out to you, my brother. He said, if you out there by uh, by Planet Hollywood, drinks on me, man. That's 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 but, all. Um, well, so 
this, so I'm out here. I mean, you can see here. That the, the hotel is actually in Henderson, so it's a little bit off the beaten path. And there's, it's just me. Everyone else left already. I got a flight at noon, so I've sp I've been out enough. I'm not. I appreciate that very much. <laughs> but I'm probably just gonna keep it inside the room tonight, man. Yeah, if, I don't want. If, if I don't want to get. I don't want to get too crazy. If he doesn't, he'll probably fuck around and miss his flight and be on some dumb. Shit. So. Yeah. <laughs> Take your ass home, man. Philip Philip cried me a river. Always whining. Out. Yep. When Indianapolis, I was thinking, man, the Colts, the Colts is a program. I mean, you're talking Peyton Manning and and um uh who was the other guy from Stanford who was the quarterback? Um, uh, luck, Andrew Luck. Luck. Like those guys, those guys are like what you want for a quarterback, dude. Like they uh, they're they're leaders. They 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 have a good time, but they there's a certain stop like they conduct themselves as a professional quarterback. And then you got this knucklehead Philip Rivers coming in, and I'm like, what are the Colts thinking, man? Like this dude just doesn't fit into the vibe of Indiana and the Colts organization. Like I would have kept Brissett. I would have kept Brissett out there instead of bringing in Philip Rivers. Yeah. You know, it, it 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 didn't work. No. Well, what they how did they do this year? Any or last year the they, Colts. Their defense was great, but was Phillip, it? Rivers, Phillip Rivers was terrible the first Good. half of the season. And Good. then he started kind of low-key building up, doing a little bit more. But at that point, it was too late. You know what I mean? Like, nah. Like, whatever, happened to, whatever happened to Brissett? Um, where did he go? Shit. That's a good question. That's a good question. I, I, thought, I, I, thought, he, I thought he played. I thought he did his thing for – you know, for just being the guy that just wasn't planning on doing anything and all of a sudden he gets thrown into a position. I thought he did pretty well for himself. Oh, he did. He did. But, you know, when you have a team like that with that kind of defense, it's like, man, it's time to win now. Like, like what, like, what, like, their defense is cold, Stu. Who do, I, I wouldn't even like, who are some players that I should know from their defense? Come on, from the, from the Colts? Yeah. Oh no, they they have a monster defense all all across the board. I mean, they I know have, who. Like, what are some names of guys? They have great linebackers. They have uh, Darry, uh, Le Leonard, uh, Darius Leonard. Uh, he's a monster. He's he's one of the best linebackers in the league. Where's he from? Missouri? No. Oh shit, that's a good question. I, I got I got to look that up because Leonard, but no, but he's one of the best linebackers in the league. Period. Um. What? They have a good secondary. Um, shit, man. They, they, shit. Justin Houston just left. Justin Houston went to Baltimore. Well, dude, back in my day, they had Dwight Freeney, Cato June, Bob Sanders, yeah. um, freaking um, – who was the uh, – Marlon Jackson. Jacoby um, went to Miami. What is it? Brissett went to Miami. Oh, he did? Yeah. Did we ever figure out where Trubisky went? Buffalo. Oh, he did? Yeah. He did? Yeah. Yeah, he'll man. Never, just, uh, he'll never see the light of day behind Josh Allen. <laughs> I mean, I don't know. I mean. Oh, they, hey, hey, Indianapolis has DeFor uh, DeForest Buckman, too. Okay. He's a monster. Don't they have a good running back? Oh, they have they have Marlon. Um, they have a couple people. They have Jonathan. Uh, what is it? Jonathan Taylor. They they have um ooh Jonathan Taylor dude yeah they have Marlon Mack that dude <laughs> yeah yeah yeah, yeah they, they got they got some guys dude trust me them see my style if I were a coach I like Wisconsin style dude big linemen mm -hmm. tough ass running backs and you run that ball until they make you stop and throw it if you can keep running that thing dude that wears a defense out bro. Yeah. And they have, I mean, think about the running backs they've had during their time, man. And like they're they're a tough team to beat, dude. All the gate, all the pretty routes and combinations and motions, dude, all that shit can be nullified if you got a team that's just tougher than the other team, man. Still and you just you just put your head down and you run some people over, dude. I like that style of football. 
real quick, I gotta let everybody know. Go follow my brother Stu. He has a YouTube page. He's about to put. He's, he's gonna start putting up some crazy stuff. I am. I am. Yeah, it's actually under his name, Stuart Swagger. Just, just go to his name. Just go to his name. I'll put it in. The, I'll put it in the comment section. But um, he's gonna start doing some things, man. And um, brother, I would love to do at some point a weekly show with me and you. I would love yeah. it because um, we can just talk about the past, the present, whatever. I want to make sure that I give a shout out to Alvin Cremier. He's, and I wrote it in your message earlier. I don't know what was what things were going on. He's the first dude that I ever seen wearing a 30 jersey. And he actually came to freaking Omaha when I played in Omaha wearing a wearing a Raiders 30 jersey. And he gave me a shirt because my nickname was Night Butcher. And yeah. he gave me this black shirt and in silver lettering where the B was like a, 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 a like a hatchet or whatever. And it says thy butcher on it. And I'm like, they do that guy. He's he's one. He, he's a dude that I'm he, I'm trying to get him you know on here and involved yeah. with some different stuff. But I wanted to make sure at least to, to set, give a shout out to him. dude. Well, let me tell you something. I just ordered and shout out to the chat gang. I just ordered myself the same jersey. With your with with your name on the back of it, and I'm are you going, serious? And I'm going to send it to you, and I want you to sign it on the back for my sons. Yeah, dude, absolutely. And, and, and I'm gonna put it in the glass in in, in the in, in, in the um in, in the man cave because at the end of the day, bro, regardless of anything, like I respect you as as a man first and foremost, but um as a football player, bro, you played for my favorite team, man, and and I grew up watching you and. The, I loved you, bro. As as a kid, I was like, I'm like, well, I can't say as a kid because we're still the same damn the same age. <laughs> yeah. yeah, but if you think of but if you think about it though, you're 33, right? 33. Aren't you 33? 37. Why did I think you were 33? Because you told anyway, me, still, you, you know, you told, you, you told me I look like that. You was like, you look like you're 30. What I, had, the I had 33 in my head. But anyways, if you think about that, that was three years like. Me being 22 in the league and you being a 19 year old kid out of high school, like that's still a big, yeah, like that's a big jump still. No, you know what I'm saying? so, um, oh, Dominic Rhodes, that was another guy that was a close friend of mine. He's a great dude. D Rhodes is a great dude. I, I just want to, I just want to say that, you know what? When I was out there, obviously, did I make every play? No, but again, those guys, they're getting paid too, man. They're some of the world's best athletes as well. You know what I'm saying? And I love the fans. I do. But it's like something like when the fans start to boo and that type of thing, if a guy, if you can see a guy's giving up and he's doing like the uh, the um, high maintenance kind of like pouty bullshit or whatever, boo him all day long. But don't boo a dude because he didn't make a play, man. And, and you know what's so crazy? I seen well, once once me and you did our last live, right? Um, and shout shout out to everybody. It's, it's it's at least over three thousand views right now. Everybody shout out, hell yeah, yeah, yeah. But everybody was like, I hated when I used to go to games and they would boo Stu because our defense, like like they were so bad that like it wasn't Stu's it was it wasn't Stu's problem. It was it, was, it wasn't his fault. So my last year, right? we were giving up some runs and, and, and Robbo was getting like, Hey, your run defense is this and that. Can you, you're there. Can you hear me? It went it screwed up a little bit. I can't hear you, my brother. Okay. So that year, like our run defense, they were breaking off some runs and scoring some more touchdowns. And it was very easy just to say, Hey, what's up with the run defense? Well, Stewart's not making tackles. Because again, if I miss, it's a touchdown. And again, there's 10 other big ass, rich, paid getting dudes <laughs> ahead of me. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Ahead of me. Okay. And that year, here's the thing you know what? One of the reasons I wanted to leave Oakland, here's the deal that game, when I knocked out Tony Gonzalez, that game, I had my mother and my wife, my girlfriend at the time, at the game, okay? Mm -hmm. 
we're in the parking lot. You know how we had the players' parking lot, and you had to the so, little, the little, the little underway down there. Yeah, 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 yeah. There was Secret Service in normal clothes, or should they say, Stu? Just so you know, there was a shooting and two stabbings. So keep it moving, dude. Like, don't like just get out of here and get going, dude. Okay. Mm-hmm. So I'm in my. I had a. I still have it. A Ford F one fifty truck. I got my wife in the passenger seat. And my no, my wife in the back, and my mom in the passenger seat. Okay, so we're pulling out, and I see a a, a Chevy Avalanche, right, mm-hmm. pulling in. So I, I I wave them in. It's four dudes in Raiders uniforms, and they notice it was me, and they're going, "Fuck you, Stu, mother, you fucking suck," and blah blah blah. And then so it started to kind of create like a little. So other people were like, "What the hell?" and they're like, that's Stu in there. And, oh, did, you, did I miss you? Did I leave you? Hello? I'm here, bro. I'm here, brother. I'm here. I'm here. So, here, hold on one second. Hold on one second. My fault. Hold on. Take your time. I, I just, no, I just, let me, let me tr- uh, throw my phone on a charger here. Yeah, I, I had to do the same thing. Um, Stu got the show staying, Stu. Everybody in the in the comment section is like, bro, Stu, 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 Stu. <laughs> Let's go. I pre- Trust me, I appreciate it, man. I Seriously, I take it very seriously. So, <laughs> I'm, dude, I'm in the, and I'm thinking, man, I'm thinking, dude, I, every Tuesday, I, I'm like, I'm out in the community, like I'm I'm one dude that I took the game seriously. Like you know, like I was trying to make every fucking play, dude. Yeah. Every play. And yeah. these dudes are they're fuck you. And I think later on in the game, Tony caught like a, a, a like a a over route and I came up, I took a bad angle and dove and I didn't make the tackle and he got like thirty more yards towards the end. I remember that. Yeah. And so these guys are in the shed. They block me in, and then people are coming up. And the guy comes out, and he's like, "You," and he's like, "They're acting like they're tackling each other. Like this is how you're supposed to tackle, pussy." And a dude came up and tried to open up my car door. So I, I jumped out of my car, and luckily the the private security came up and saw what was going on. I said, "Stu, get back in your car, man." I said, "I'm not fuck. I'm not. I got my wife and my mom in this fucking car, dude. These guys are trying to open up the fucking door." Like, I'm going to go there and kicking some fucking ass, right? Oh, he said, God. Get back in the car. They end up, all five of those dudes got their season tickets revoked. And I'm like, you know what, man? I said, I said, I didn't, I, I said, being personally attacked by the fans of the team that I'm laying my fucking life down for, I said, I don't need this shit, bro. I don't, yeah. I don't need, I don't need this shit. I'm like, I'm thinking, I'm the last dude that they should be fucking questioning my on the field presence right like i'm thinking what the fuck man but as somebody that watched every game you play in, in the nfl um that was some goofy shit it, 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 it was some goofy shit bro like like you've never you well here here's the thing perception is reality and when the media is saying stuff the fans who don't really watch the game they just read the comments and you know, seeing me, on, and here's the thing too, like on Sports Center, they, we didn't have any freaking highlights on offense, so it might be a deal where it's not even my play, but I'm running over to try to make a play, and I'm diving in the end zone to try to hit the motherfucker, at least hit him. But you see me, so they're going, dude, this white dude just keeps getting scored on, and you know, then Rob Ryan saying that the, the rushing thing went on. It's like it was yeah. very easy for me to be the the scapegoat, right? You know what I'm saying? So it was just. It, it was, and I, I do want to talk sometime about why my whole contract issue, but that, that day when, when the fans did that to me, man, that, that I was like, man, it, it's not worth it, dude. I'm like, man, I'm a, I'm a, I'm a, I'm a human being and I got people coming up to me, like trying to open up the door and then thinking I'm not going to try to come out and whoop their ass or some shit. You know what I'm saying? I'm like, what I'm, I'm thinking, man, what the fuck? I can tell you this right now, Stu, from somebody that was born and raised in Northern California, 
if you can if you can like really really stay out there in East Oakland and get by, you a real one because oh. East Oakland is different, West Oakland is different, North Oakland is different. I mean, Richmond is uh, everywhere in the Bay. You know what I mean? I'm, I'm born and raised out there, man. I know what it is. Um, you know, you play with some historically bad. Let me, let me ask you this real quick, because I, I always wanted to know this. How, as, as a player, like, how does it feel to know, like, you're playing for a bad team? Like, like, like is it, it's like, how is it to wake up in the morning and be like, we're about to win this game? But it's like, we're probably not, because... <laughs> Like this roster is ass, man. It you, it, it's the greatest team sport in the world. Yes, but, but at that point, really, man, my my deal was, I didn't want to be the reason why we were losing the games. Mm-hmm. I, you know what, I'm gonna try to do my job. But here's the thing, too, though, I believe gr- greatly in the power of your mind, man, and. If I'm out there going, I know I'm going to make this play and I'm going to win this game and I'm going to get an interception, I'm going to make this tackle, typically I would. But there were times when we might even be winning and that momentum, like you can feel it. I'm going, man, like we're going to lose this game or I'm going to miss a tackle. Sure enough, usually when you start thinking that way, it fucking happens, dude. It happens. It happens. And knowing again, as a defense, if you gave up like two touchdowns, it was over. Oh. You know what I'm saying? Like yeah. our goal, like here, here it was. We had just certain goals. If you can hold a team under 17 points, that's a win for the defense. For sure. I'm thinking we're playing the whole game, but three and outs and you know, getting the ball back in our offense's hands. And we've been holding them to field goals and doing this and that, but our offense hasn't been able to do anything. And we're going, man, we busted our ass. And in the fourth quarter, they make a drive and win the game. And then it's, oh, look what the defense did. And it's like, man, like, we <laughs> busted our ass. All, like, we need some help, dude. And again, I'm not saying we we're perfect by any means, right? Yeah. I mean, there were games where we fucked it up. I mean, we did. We didn't play good or whatever, or they had a good game plan or just whatever it was. But trying to play to where you know if you give up one play that could ruin the game. I mean, you're talking in an NFL football game, 50, maybe maybe 60 plays. Yeah. Every single play could be the one that wins or loses the game. Yeah. Baseball players, hockey players, basketball, they play so many goddamn games like Dude, you could go a three game where they don't. They, hey, listen, you know what? We're on a road. We're on a, a three game road street, right? A three game um, road trip. trip. Yeah, Let's right. not get injured. You know, don't worry. Like in football, dude, every single play is so freaking huge, man. And if you're playing to like not give up one play, you, there's no way, man. You can't. You can't play that way. You cannot play like when I was at Purdue, man. Like Drew Brees, Kyle Orton, like. Our offense, like, we knew, like, if we get the ball in our offense's hand, guys, like, over, we're going to win this game, man. Like, even, like, you play, like, if we give up a touchdown, like, our offense is going to get the shit back. So when you play with more confidence like that, dude, you play better. But, again, when you're trying to play perfect, knowing, like, if you give up two touchdowns in a game, our offense just isn't good enough to compete with the other team. You know what I'm saying? And Let let me ask you real quick. Who is the best player you've ever faced? Where you were like, where you were like, this motherfucker is just extraterrestrial. Like they're they're not a human fucking being. I don't know. Like, you know, everyone's era was like, you think it was over, but I I was fortunate enough, man. Like during my time, like you're talking about some big name, like yeah. players, dude. Like. I'm thinking like guys that everybody knows, you know what I mean? Like there was just ballers everywhere. Um, I'm trying to think of, obviously LaDainian Thomason was always a bad, that guy was cool as hell, man. He was a great, great competitor, great guy. Um, 
Michael Vick. I'm just Michael Vick was bad. Uh, uh, Calvin Johnson. I had a chance to play with Calvin Johnson, man, and that dude, he came to every workout and went like did all of the sprint things and won every drill you could, man. And that dude was a freaking monster, dude. Yeah, Smart, yeah. fucking tall, big, just a just a beast. Yeah. Um, like I said, Roddy Brown was a tough, tough boy to, to, to play against. Um, Ocho Cinco and TJ Hushmanzada. Uh, okay. Okay. Tiki, Tiki Barber and, you oh. know, uh, uh, I'm trying to think of receivers. Um, Antonio Gates. He was, Ooh. he was a great one. Kellen Winslow Jr. Braylon Edwards. Um, Ruben Drones. You remember Ruben Drones? Hell yeah. He was he was he was a tough running back, dude. He was a freaking okay. tough, tough running back. Um, Brandon Jacobs. Um, Bro, now now what's funny is I live in Dallas now, right? And Brandon Jacobs' cousin, um, I work with her, and she's like this big motherfucker. He he, he just big for nothing. He just he's big. Huge. He's huge, dude. He's a big yeah. dude. Yeah, yeah, he's yeah. Straight up, big boy. Oh, Heinz Ward. Tell you right now, yep. Ford, you better know where he's at because he blocks like he an off. Go ass the fuck out. You saw him knock the fuck out of Ed Reed, dude. And Ed Reed is the best there is, dude. I'm telling you. Yeah. Heinz Wait, Ward. Hold on, hold on. Stay in that. Who? Because you played the safety position. Who is your favorite safety ever? Wait, hold on. Wait, wait, wait one more thing. Uh, Domin Don Dominic Rayola. You remember the center? For the Lions, played in Nebraska. Yeah, dude, when you play them, dude, do not be standing by the pile. Do not be sitting there hanging out. He will come and he will clean you the fuck out. He will clean you the fuck out, dude. He will try to break your fucking back, dude. Um, uh, Brandon Marshall. Sorry, I'm just Brandon Marshall. Plexico Burris was tough. Um, all right. Anyway, so, uh, what was your question? Sorry. Oh, uh, you know what. I'm going I'm to I'm chalk that off because I forgot that I had a, a super chat real quick. I didn't see this. Um, shout out to uh, 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 Auntie, uh, Auntie Soldier. He says, uh, what went wrong with Jamarcus Russell? Um, again, in the NFL, man, to be a quarterback, it's, it's just not about a big arm and like, you have to have a certain moxie about you, man. Like there's a certain, like it there I mean even like people thought like Michael Vick was hood with the dog shit like dude Michael Vick is he's he's not like when you speak to him that dude is highly intelligent he is freaking on the ball he is a great competitor yeah. he doesn't talk shit one I of mean, my athletes of all time he's one of my dude he is he is great but Jamarcus Russell again that whole bullshit about he could throw the ball 80 yards on his knee. And I like Jamarcus. I do. I like Jamarcus Russell. I, I I wish I could reconnect and see how he's doing. You know what I'm saying? But that 80 yards, he could throw it 80 yards, but he put so much air under it. That's the difference. As a DB, you put all that air under it, oh, a you, DB's going to make it up. You, yeah, you give me a chance. Yeah, yeah. Got Michael Vick and Brett Favre, when they – when they throw that thing 76 yards and it's on a rope, dude, you, if they got a step on you, that's it. That's it. So I, I, I don't know if – I didn't understand he had these big hands and the ball would always slip out of his hands too. I never understood that. Um, I just think he was a guy that, again, kind of like Gallery, had a, had a, had a, had a great, great – year at the right time and was drafted prior probably higher than he should have been you know i mean okay I, so let me let me let me ask you this what was the, who was the best quarterback that you faced oh hold on one second i'm thinking of other guys um well speaking of quarterback steve mcnair steve mcnair was a bad boy god rest his soul uh dude you remember a guy named jonathan ogden Yes, hell yeah. Biggest, 
biggest dude I've ever seen in my life. And them linemen, they they those dudes when they run them screen plays, dude, they are hauling ass. And if they get their hands on you, dude, you are gonna be. They are going to try to kill you. That those big linemen, dude, are freaking. Jonathan Ogden was man. That dude was. He was a beast. Um, remember Todd Heap? Hell yeah, Todd Heap. Yeah. Um, God, I'm, I just I'm in my head. I'm just thinking of um, uh, so hey, quarterbacks. Hey, Red real Hawk. quick, real quick, why are you doing that? Let me say something real quick, man. Shout out to my brother Ricardo. Um, he just actually just donated three hundred dollars right now, bro. Whoa, that's awesome, man. He, um, he said, "What's good, Graf? It's been a minute. Traveling a lot. Work lately, uh, but watching your content like at midnight every time." I seen you finally stop working for the man and became the man. Um, congrats. Super proud, my brother. Um, truly inspirational what you're doing. First of all, let me tell you something. Real quick. Okay, so you don't know, bro, but I just quit my job. I'm doing this full time. Good um, for you. Good yeah. for you, Dad. Good yeah. for you. Yeah, I'm, I'm not. I'm not. Good for you. Good yeah. for you, dude. Um, but also, man, shout out to my brother Ricardo because – this is the type of shit that makes me realize that what I'm doing is working and yes, and yes. It's, 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 it's right. You know what I mean? So, um, Ricardo, brother, I, I can't. Where, where's Ricardo from? Ricardo, th th this, this is Stu right here, man. He's asking you where are you from. Um, I just know, man, my brother Ricardo, man, is on his shit, and um, I appreciate you, my brother. $300 bomb. That's dope. That's dope. That's dope. That's awesome, man. That's that that's big up to that, dude. That's great, man. Yes, sir. I appreciate it. Um but what are we talking about oh, quarterbacks? So obviously Brett Favre. Yes. Brett Favre was 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 a I mean I I bias. Obviously, Drew Brees. You know, I mean, I I I have so much respect for Peyton Manning. Peyton Manning was dude, that guy. We had to so what we had to do when we played Peyton Manning, you had to call defense. He'd come up and he'd check. Then we'd get back to a different defense. So he'd come up and check. And then we'd go back to the first one we'd called. And then he'd check. And then we'd have a third one that we didn't show him yet to be the final one while the play clock ran down. So he didn't know what we were doing. He was just, he was, he was, he was, Peyton Manning was, was really, really good. Um, who else? Who I'm trying to think of? God damn. Okay, fuck all that. I see, I see another comment where it says, who was the toughest guy to tackle? Well, hold, um, I do have to say, Sean Taylor was, monster. that dude was, dude. A fucking monster. He, he didn't, he didn't, he didn't care who you were, dude. Like, he, he, he would fuck you up, like, like if you're in practice, like, what happened? Did I you there? Oh, you here, brother? We good. Um, so I gotta, I gotta say, big up to, to, to him, obviously. Um, I, I gotta pay respects to Rod Woodson, Chris Dishman, Ed Reed, uh, Troy Palamulu, um, um, the guy from Philadelphia, Do uh, Brian Dawkins. Oh, Brian, <sighs> come um, on. Go, uh, Ronnie Lott. I gotta say, what's up to Ronnie Lott? Um. I'm trying to think of some other safeties or defensive backs that are really, really respected their game. Um, oh, dude, what am I talking about? When we talked about Raiders players, Kirk Morrison. Jesus Christ, he lived right behind me, man. Kirk's my dude. I, him and my mom were friends. So but my mom I, would come and I reached out to him. What's crazy is I said, hey, man, I, I, me, me and Stu been doing these shows. I said, I would love to have you come on. You know what I mean? And um, Did you respond back? He hasn't seen me yet. Not yet? He hasn't seen your message yet? I was happy as hell when I saw him doing an interview with Ice Cube. Did you see that? I haven't seen it. Oh yeah, he did. He did an interview with Ice Cube a couple weeks ago, dude. It was it was freaking. It was it was cool as shit. It was cool as hell. Oh, here you okay. go. Running backs that are tough. Justin Fargus. That was Justin a Fargus, bro. Who's here, by the way? Lives in Vegas, dude. Me and him, like. We have a relationship, like his dad's Huggy Bear, right? So I actually talked to his dad a little while ago, but I remember being a recruit at Michigan. 
hearing about Justin Fargus coming in, this kid from California coming into Michigan after they won the national championship. Uh -oh. I remember watching him run all over, run all over Northwestern. I was at the game against Wisconsin with a minute and a half to go, and they're just running the clock out. And that's when he had that knee injury where his leg was like sideways, man. It was bad. I remember that. But Justin, we used to do in we had practice, we used to do tackling drills, you know, back in 2004 and 2005. But Justin Fargus was a tough ass running back. Ronnie Brown, like I told you, Amon Green, me and Jamal Lewis would get into it. He was a big tiptoeing ass dude. He wasn't like a he wasn't like a physical guy. He was big, but he had great footwork. Yeah. Great footwork. Um, oh, God. Lendell White was a – oh, dude. Willis McGahee. Oh, okay. Okay. You Willis McGahee. Dude, Willis McGahee. My remember, dude, I remember he had that whole knee thing. and He was playing for Buffalo. He came out, and me and Cooper were like, this dude is fucking huge. <laughs> he was freaking huge, dude. Yeah. That dude was a monster. That guy was freaking big, man. Um, obviously, Ron Dane was a big, tough running back. I didn't like the guy. Um, he big-timed me at this event when I was in high school. He wouldn't sign an autograph for me, and he was just sitting at a table by himself. He's like, no, man, I'm... I'm I'm good, dude. I'm like, man, fuck this guy. Um, hold on, real quick. Hold, 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 my my, my fat, real, my, my, real quick, man. No, you're I, fine. I'm just, I'm just thinking of guys now. Shout, shout out to Ricardo, my brother. No, I most definitely, I seen everything that you um were doing, brother. He says, Docs deserves every cent, bro. What he does for the nation, he brings it to us. It's not easy. I appreciate you, my brother. I swear to God, bro. Like. I will forever be indebted to what you do for this channel. Um, my guys, man, like, I, bro, yesterday I quit my job. I'm done. Like, this is what I do full time now. And, um, bro. Hey, listen, I know, I know anything new can be scary, but you're going to be just fine, dude. Trust me. You're going to be just fine. Yeah. And, and what's cool you're, you're going to be just fine, dude. Trust me. Nah, I know, brother. I know. And, um, uh, I'm good, man. Hey, when you get home, though, trust me. This, this, I'm, I'm like, this is who I am, bro. I'm ready to fly out there. And say, come on, bro. Let's, 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 let's get some interviews done. Let's do some other shit because I just love, I love this shit, brother. I love this shit, bro. Like, I really do. I really, really love this. Look, bro. It's, it's, it's twelve thirty Eastern right now, and it's almost three hundred people right now in the chat right now. Is there really? Yeah, bro. Like the whole time, it's been 400, 300 people the whole time. You know what I mean? So, yeah, man. So, like, people are interested in what you got going on, brother. Like, and, and they want to know what you got going on. Sorry, I'm just in my head right now thinking of players, dude. By by fall, dude. I'm just like, I'm thinking of players. Um, oh, Clinton Portis. Okay. He fumbled it all the time, though. He was a fumbler. <laughs> he was a fumbler, dude. He was a fumbler. Uh, Cedric Benson for the Bears. God rest his soul. He was a big back. Oh, Ricky Will. Oh, okay, now I'm. Well, hold on, hold on. What about Jerome Bettis? Not a fan. And he's a he's he's a Detroit boy. He went down to Notre Dame, and yep. I just I was a Tyrone Wheatley fan. Tyrone's from Michigan. And he stuck it out and, and went to Michigan, and like I just nothing against Jerome, but I don't know. I mean, okay, I just was never impressed with the guy. But. Hold on. Be, be, before we get out of here tonight, we're going to do this. Yeah. We're gonna, we're gonna what about do, the bus? Okay. We're gonna, no, no, no. We ain't going to do that. I'm going to say this. We're going to do the offensive side of the ball tonight. Defense will be later on. Favorite wide receiver of all time. Wait, wait. Let me – hold on. Let me go back real quick, though. Steven Jackson. Whoo. Okay. That dude. He former can, Ram. He former Ram. Team. Dude, remember, that was the first preseason game in my career. And I, I had, like, 12 or 13 tackles against that big motherfucker, dude. He was big that, as fuck. He was like the predator running around out there and shit. The big-ass dreads and shit, yeah. Real shit. <laughs> <laughs> you, you ain't I, lying. I'm going to tell you this. And actually, I, I, I met him at Zach Crockett's football camp. 
He's cool as hell, dude. Cool He's as from shit. Vegas. He's from Vegas. Is he from Vegas? Yep. Well, Oregon State goes to Purdue in the opening game of the year, uh, college football this year. So I'm pumped to see and talk some shit to, to um, Steven Jackson. But I will say this, and I'm going to be honest with you. It was in 2006 when we're playing the Rams, right? Uh-huh. And Steven Jackson broke through. And I, it was, it was, so it was, I'm in the middle of the field, right? And Namdi's out here. And the receiver, so it was me and Namdi coming in. He's coming up, and I'm like, man, I'm like, it was. I was like, this game's over. It was like in the fourth quarter, and I'm like, <laughs> this dude is this dude is hauling right? So I look, and I'm like, I look, I'm like, oh, Dombey's kind of Nambi's gonna get him. So I, it was the only time in my career I ever slowed down, and Nambi's like, oh, Stu's gonna get him, and we both kind of, and he, no, none of us hit him, and he just fucking went on and scored, and I'm like. <laughs> What? No, I thought you were gonna hit him. I'm like, I thought you were gonna, but we both looked at each other, and he just, you know, just ran right by. And I'm like, I the only time, I mean, you you would be able to tell it. But yeah, we yeah. were like, <laughs> we were laughing, dude. We were laughing. Uh, Ricky Williams, though. Ricky Williams, he he was a dog. Ricky Williams was a dog. Um, so wait, receiver, you said? No, 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 no. We're, we're gonna do this. Favorite receiver of all time. No, it doesn't have to be a Raider. Favorite receiver of all time. During my playing career? No, no. Favorite receiver of all time. See, growing up in, in with Detroit, Herman Moore was a big I loved Herman Moore. Yes. Herman Moore, Andre Risen. He's from Flint. Went to yeah. Michigan State. Yeah. Andre Bad Moon Risen, like he was a he was a, a receiver that so I got a chance to meet him here. That was really okay. cool. Okay. Um obviously Randy Moss. I mean, come on, man. Randy Moss. Uh you know, Jerry Rice. I wasn't a big 49ers fan, but I always liked Tim Brown. Tim Brown. The GOAT. Let's go. He was he I remember him. He was like because he went to Notre Dame, right? He played with a lot of bad quarterbacks. What? Well, yeah, yeah. But Purdue and Notre Dame were big rivals, so I I know Tim Brown, right? Yeah. And sure. he like came up to me and was like, "Hey, Stu, man, Purdue and this and that." So he was like, he was just cool as hell. Yeah. I liked Plexico Burris from Michigan State, obviously. Ooh, Desmond I Howard. Like I Desmond that. Howard, man. I mean, at Michigan, Desmond Howard. Um. No, no, no. Who did you who did you grow up on where you were like, I can't wait to guard that motherfucker? Ah. Uh, if you had to pick, like if, if if literally somebody had a gun to you and said, This is your who is your favorite receiver? Oh ever? another good one was another good one was though uh, was um out in Denver. Uh Number eighty played many years for Denver. Yeah, you ain't talking about Shan- you're not talking about Shannon Sharp. N- no, I did like Shannon Sharp for Green Bay. I did like Shannon Sharp. No, um, uh, uh, Sterling Sharp was in, on Green Bay. That was sorry, the- Sterling Sharp. Shannon Sharp was Ster- a top for for De- for Denver. I'm not a big fan of, of Shannon Sharp. Um, who, um, what did I just say? Who was I saying before that? You no. What was it? Oh, Rod Smith. That's it. Yeah. Rod yeah. Smith. Rod Smith was cool. Rod Smith was cool. Um, hold on. Just. Oh, uh, Houston. Damn. Um, from no. Miami. Number 80 for the Houston Texans. Andre? Andre Johnson. Yeah. Andre Johnson. Okay. I like that. I like that. Okay. So, no, no, no. no, no matter of fact. Wait, wait, the- wait, 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 wait. Uh, there, I know there's a couple of them. Um, I was not a big Terrell Owens fan. He was okay, but I'd say probably one of my favorites would be Calvin Johnson, man. He was just, that dude was just cool, a great teammate. And that dude, there are certain players at that level. Like, you don't expect them to be doing the summer workouts and de- doing that type of stuff, right? That dude came to every workout 
and was winning every like conditioning sprint drill. And he was just a freaking beast, dude. Just an absolute freaking beast. Who, who made you want to play football though? Um wait, big up big ups to Dante Hall. Dante yeah. X Factor. He was a he was a monster. Uh spoke sooner to that. Uh Chris Chambers played at Miami from Wisconsin. Um who, wait, wait, who was it? Who did who did I what what, what was it? What'd you ask? Bro, uh, to be honest with you, everybody telling me that they're like, I'm, I'm out here pouring a bottle, ain't got nothing else in it no more. So I, I, I don't even know what the fuck I'm talking about no more. No, so. you said you said receiver or no, no, no. Who's your favorite? Okay, the player that made you want to play. Oh, I didn't grow up a fan, dude. I, I didn't. I didn't grow up. My I, like, I remember when my older brothers every Saturday they wanted to watch. Michigan or Michigan State, and they wanted to watch the Lions. And I was always like, "Turn this off, man! Turn this, turn this off! I don't want to watch this." You know what I'm saying? Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Obviously, my guy, obviously Bo Jackson, and then Barry Sanders. I mean, Barry Sanders, my favorite player, like, dude. And he, he, he had nobody. He had. That's why the comparison between Emmett Smith and Barry Sanders. I'm like, I just can't. I'm like. I can't do it, man. Emmett Smith had quarterbacks and receivers and uh, uh, all pro offensive linemen, dude. I'm like, he's just running yeah. to where he's supposed to go, man. Mm -hmm. And I didn't like him because Emmett Smith got inducted to the Sun Bowl Hall of Fame when I played in the 2001 yeah. Sun Bowl. And he came back to speak. And do you remember we played Washington? Do you remember receiver named Reggie Williams? Hell yeah. Big dude. And all Emmett Smith would just, he was just up there just blowing the motherfucker. And I'm like, Jesus Christ. I mean, get that dude's dick out of your mouth, bro. <laughs> like, come on, dude. Stop. Like, I was just like, man, come on. Like, you have no affiliation with either team. Like, you could throw us a little respect at all. Just something, man. You know? Um, but Barry Sanders, dude. That dude, so, I mean, growing up in Michigan, like, Barry Sanders was freaking – because I was a running back when yeah. I was growing up. But so so for me, I didn't ha – we just played, man. Like, we – I didn't I didn't watch the games. I didn't, like, know all the coaches and players, and I didn't wear any jerseys or um, – That's why that's, oh. everybody's in the comment section right now asking, um, you know, like – what what is bros um uh uh, uh ask like well, what what does he think about our team today and I'm like he doesn't watch this shit like he doesn't watch it well I will now though okay I will now yeah. I didn't watch it I didn't watch it before man because it brought up when you're, a football, when you're a football player dude the only thing you focus on are the plays you don't make yes coaches you don't. You don't have time to sit there and talk about the good plays. We need to make the corrections and talk about the shit where you need to get better at on this, this, and this, and this. So when I left Oakland, all I thought about was the negative stuff, man. And then going around to other teams and the way they just treat you like just shit, dude. Like just shit. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, I just can't watch. I just can't. And then you're also seeing guys that you played with that you're going, this dude, is still in the league like that <laughs> are you like are you yeah. kidding me yeah it's real you, you gotta be fucking kidding me dog hey, so hey, hold on real quick before you finish that sentiment Stu. terrence put up Stu's youtube page it's on right now oh every everybody go subscribe to my brother man Stu was about to start dropping a bunch of content on there He's gonna be man. He's gonna be going crazy and a bunch of exclusive shit you can't see anywhere else. You so, me? for so for the Raiders that two thousand every every game for the Raiders on there is every play in two thousand six I was involved with, good or bad, and I I challenge people to go watch that stuff and see how many bad plays I had in those all of those games. There might be one or two missed tackles the whole year. And you talk about great players like Ed Reed and Troy Palamulu, 
They were great, but they came flying in and they were missing a shit ton of tackles, but they just made that. And here's the thing. They had a name for themselves. So the announcers, they just kind of, yeah, they didn't say nothing about it. Right. They didn't go, look, Troy just missed that tackle. If they didn't say nothing, the fans not going to recognize it. But then when they would make a great play, it was like, it just, it was like, oh my God, look yeah. at this. Right. So I challenged people just to go on there and just take a look and just see some of the plays that I was doing out there. One-on-one -on -one tackling, bro. That I'm just, it's everyone in front of me. You're going to see guys like Mike Hupp and Kirk Morrison getting run over or just completely missing. And I come up and I'm cleaning shit up, dude. I'm when they get to me, I'm just saying, you can watch it, man. I'm just saying you, it's yeah. every play. I didn't just put, there's bad plays on there, but I want people to count. And see how many were. The other thing I always tell people is do this. And I, I'm, I'm on my soapbox right now. But when I talk about my career, some guys. Brother, I watch, I watch every play that you've ever. Um, like people yeah. like everybody in this channel knows I'm a diehard Raider. Like I watch everything. So I know, bro, like I know what you were capable of doing. You just played on some bad teams. <laughs> <laughs> well, here, here's the thing, too, is I tell people this. Just. Because there's, I don't, I don't, I don't, I don't, I don't, I don't want to say I don't respect, but I don't judge a player by him playing 15 years because the first couple of years he could have been on practice squad and yeah. then a couple of years he could have been doing on special teams and he might have started one year because he was, he was kissing the coach's ass. He played another couple of years and blah, 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 blah. So I go is. off of like, how many, like what kind of plays were you making, dude? Like in your career. So I always challenge people. Pick any safety, pick any safety, and look at their first four years of their career. Judge their stats against mine. Just see it where I compare against guys like Palomulu and guys like Ed Reed. Now, I will say this. I didn't have interceptions because you know why? I was 15 yards deep in the middle of the field. There was no disguising. I mean, Michael couldn't come down and show this and show that. That safe, that quarterback knew Stewart's going to be in the middle of the field. So you think he's going to throw the ball there? Now, there were a couple of times they did. They tested me, and I, I took that bitch, you know. <laughs> but it was few and far between, man. Like, it was hard to get picks when the quarterback knows where you're at every play, Straight right? Up. And I'm coming from Purdue where I had 17 interceptions, but I was able to move around and disguise and, you know, do that type of stuff. So interception-wise – not up to par where it should have been at all. But look at it, forced fumbles, starts, tackles, uh, fumble recoveries, um, all that type of stuff. I just challenge you guys, look and see where how I compare to some of these other guys, their first four years of their career. Any, any, any real ones, no. Any, any, any real ones, no. We know what it is. And, and again, it's for me, it's just, it's just, I just, I always like to just be real, right? Like, I'm always like, you know what? If you think I suck, just I just challenge you to take a look at that. And I, I don't know. And I obviously I'm a, I'm a fan of myself, but I don't know how you can look at that when I put shit there. Like Stu, like what the fuck, dude? Like you were like making every fucking play, but we were losing games. We yeah. were losing games. We were not on national TV. All people saw was just that we were getting beat. So everybody out there must just suck. Like so. You know, I mean, hey, hey, hey real quick, because everybody's asking your opinion on our team now. Thank I, you, Deadly Pegasus. Peg, 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 yeah, Peg. I, I, I want to tell you guys all that, like, Stu is only he's just finally getting back into football, he has not paid attention to football for a long time. So, I'm pro not, football, I did watch Purdue okay. and high school, okay. Purdue and high school, but NFL, no, bro, no. put like this. My bro Stu has been so out the loop. He said, "Hey, what's that running back we got? That that tight end we got? Abrams? Abrams? No, 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 no. I, I said, I said we got Darren Waller. Said, oh yeah, that's the guy. No, Abrams is the safety. Jacobs yes. is the running back. Yes, and yes. Waller is the tight end. Yes, yes. Hey, I'm, I'm, I'm trying. You know, I know, I know. Incognito's out there, right? Incognito does he? Uh -huh. stop? Is he still out there? Oh, yeah, 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 for sure. Um, obviously, <laughs> the defensive end, 98. Uh, is it 98? It's about Mad, Mad Max. We got, we got Michigan Mad boy. Eastern yeah, Michigan yeah. boy. 
State boy, Miss uh, well, Miss East Michigan, Eastern East. Michigan, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Out freaking balling, uh, <laughs> that boy killing shit, hit and Yannick together, yeah. I knew who Khalil Mack was. I knew that dude. <laughs> it's too late for that shit, though. <laughs> I know, I know, I know, I know. I'm just, and I know. Isn't is the middle linebacker the kid who was the big white safety from Clemson, Nick Wachowski? And now he's a linebacker. Is it? Is oh, that, it's my uh, Tanner Muse. Yeah. Yes. Is he 50, 44? He was a safety at, at Clemson. Now he's a linebacker. 44? Yes. No, no, 44 is, is Nick Wachowski. 50. Okay. 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 Um, I'm trying to. I, I know uh, Rig, Riggs, Ru, the number 11. Number 11. 11. Who else do I know? Let's go. Talk, let, 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 we we gonna test. We we gonna test my OG's gangster right now. But what we doing? Well, you know how I know it. I got on Madden, so that like <laughs> I picked the rest. <laughs> hey, hey, you know what's so crazy? Everybody in the comment section tonight was saying that you're Madden. You were you were the fastest motherfucker on Madden. <laughs> no, you know what's funny? So I go back to 06 when remember they had the rushing attack. Yes. Yeah. I played, it was Danny Clark was the linebacker and I was the safety. And I every time I get my dude, and I was out there fucking people up with my dude, man. I was fucking, once in a while though, they may get me, you know, but oh yeah, dude. But uh, so, but I, so I had a season with the Raiders now, but I told you, remember I downloaded, someone had the entire 2005 yes. rosters. Uh -huh. So I downloaded that. I've been doing that, but I, I got on there and I was, Finding players' names through that. Uh 25. He's not with the safety. He's not with us anymore, is he? Who? 25? Oh, no, no. We, we got Trayvon Merrick now. Who is the guy though, that was 25? Light-skinned cat. Oh, it's my Eric Harris? Eric Harris. You know, he's, he's in Atlanta now. Two years ago, he was making a ton of tackles, but last year the coach said he started missing some. He was ass. Was he? He was ass. Okay. I knew Jeff Heath. I knew Jeff Heath because he's from, he went to Saginaw Valley State University. White boy, white boy. Yep, yeah, but, you know, he played like, see, that's like, he played 10 years in the league. And I'm thinking, I mean, I respect the dude, but he wasn't me, dog. Like, bro, but what's just, funny is our, our defense was so bad last year that Jeff Heath led us in interceptions. He had four. I didn't even, no, he didn't. He had four INTs last year, bro. I thought he was hurt last year. No, he, he was this, he was supposed to be a special teams ace for us type type situation. He was our number one safety. He had four INTs. He he led our team in defense. Because yeah. he'd come in on he come down like on third down packages, wouldn't he? He's like a third down safety. Stool. And nickel or dime. Dude, what's so fucked up is he was in there all the fucking time. He was? I I, I no, 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 but he, he played, he, but he played under Paul Gunther. Paul Gunther's defenses was terrible. So I don't really know, but yes. Here's he, funny he, Jeff Heath story. So when I did some, um, when I was getting into coaching, I went and did volunteer coaching at Saginaw Valley State University, and I coached the tight ends. There was a guy named Christian Babini who played at Saginaw Valley State, and he was my assistant tight ends coach. Uh -huh. He's very good friends with Jeff Heath, and me and this Babini became really close. He said, Stu, I gotta tell you a funny story because when I owned the Saginaw Sting, the uh -huh. indoor team, yeah. like these guys were in college, so they'd come to the games, right? Like they're drinking, and they said, "Stu, I remember we went into the bathroom and you were in there taking a piss, and we were like, dude, that's too swagger, man. Like, holy shit, like that, that's too swag.' Whatever. Like, hey, what's up, guys? And I'm out of but they're like, I'm just thinking like. They're like, dude, that, that's that's when we first met you. Like, holy shit, man, that's too swagger or whatever. You know what I mean? So, that's my Jeff He story. So I wanted to meet him when I came out here, but obviously he got he got released. Yeah. Uh, but Abrams, so I know Abrams because there's a kid I trained since he was in sixth grade that was the number one recruit to come out of Michigan. He went to my high school, Brian Cole. Mm -hmm. Had some issues at Michigan. Went to Last Chance U, Eastern Eastern Mississippi State, right? And then he was at Mississippi State for two years, and he played with Abrams his junior year before Abrams got drafted to Oakland. So I know Abrams, but he's always hurt, right? 
he was hurt his rookie year. The the first the first game of the season, he fucked his shoulder up. But last year he came back. But he played under a terrible defensive scheme. Like, what? Bro, Stu, put like this, bro. If you play under that scheme that we played uh, yes uh, last year, you would have quit, bro. You might fuck this shit. I'm done. What were they doing? Paul got there's one of the worst defensive coordinators of all time. It, it, I'm telling you right now, like, bro, if you would have played last year, you'd have been like, oh, you know what? I'll go work at McDonald's, bro. Fuck this shit. Like, I, like, like there's, there's no reason. Like, like, bro, I'm trying to tell you that this shit was one of the – we had one of the – historically one of the worst defenses in the world last year. Really? Yes. Bad. 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 Well, I – okay, so here's the deal. So – that kid I'm talking about. Abe is a great player. He's a great safety. He needs to be in the box. He does. He does not need to be in the back. You know what I'm saying? He does not be playing that that like way way that, back free shit. He needs to be in middle, the. Hey, that middle of the field shit ain't for everybody, dog. That is hey. shit not for everybody, bro. Like that down when I went to Detroit and played like strong towards the line of scrimmage, I'm like, I'd have probably 200 tackles getting the running back before he gets rolling and. As, as in the blocking scheme, they don't block the safety because they're telling the running back, your job's to make that dude miss. So we're leaving him unblocked. So it's they funnel the running backs right to you. That middle of the field shit, dude, that I'm, that's not for everybody, man. I'm telling you, man, that shit is 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 tough. Um, yeah. But here's the deal. So the kid I trained, he ends up being a captain at Miss, or a team captain at Mississippi State, gets drafted by the Miami Dolphins. Or sorry. Minnesota Vikings. Yes, sir. And when he got drafted, it was the first time I was excited about NFL football. Mm -hmm. So I watched the Raiders play somebody. I can't remember what it was. And I'm watching it. I'm going, this is football. <laughs> I'm like, it's like Pascal. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I was it looked like the CFL to me. And I'm not, I'm not just talking about the Raiders. I'm talking about NFL football in, 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 in entirety. I'm like, Hold on, hold on, hold on. Hey, hold on, hold on. Let me tell you this real quick. Shout tell out we have up 30. Other watts. We averaged 30 points a game last year, bro. Oof. What was his record? Eight and eight. Play up? No. no 30 points a game, bro. Our defense was so epically bad. Bro, we averaged. Bro, we had a top 10 offense. Like, bro, our offense was insane. Well, what were teams running? Were teams throwing? Were they were doing whatever the fuck they wanted to against us? Was it blown coverages? Did you guys not know what the fuck they were supposed to be at, or what? Bro, the 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 the, the scheme that we had it, it, it didn't make no sense. So okay, we have we have a uh, a Littleton, right? A former All Pro, Pro Bowl, uh, um, li a linebacker from the Rams. He came over to to the Raiders and looked like he didn't know what the fuck he was doing anymore because. The scheme that we ran, nobody knew what the fuck they were doing, bro. Nobody. Uh, uh, there was only two players on our defense that looked like they even knew a, a shed of what the fuck we what, what we were supposed and to do. Who are those guys? Who are those guys? It was it was Nick Wachowski, which came over to, from the Bears, and he's more of a um, a traditional linebacker, one of those old school thumper yeah. kind, of, kind of kind of still cool in coverage, but um, and then Nicholas Morrow, which is kind of the same kind of thing it's, it's another linebacker but bro this defense was bad it was bad because they didn't know what the fuck they were doing so that, that man that that that's i don't know i mean obviously some of the responsibility falls on the players but that's the coaches man that's the coaches, coaches, the coaches need to simple so here's the deal <laughs> With Chuck Pagano, man, I, I'll show you sometimes. Great. We had the same with, coach. with, with what? Great coach, dude. So Rob Ryan and Wink Martindale, I have the most respect for them, dude. But they tried to stop every play. Like they tried to build a defense to stop every single play, right? Mm -hmm. So we had this thing, top ten, top ten thing to hit off for this game. Dude, number one would have like blah blah blah, and then Roman Newton no, had A, 
And then A would have Roman numeral one, two, three, and then B. So really the top 10 was like a hundred, right? And we're like, dude, how, how can you keep track of all this stuff? So Chuck Pagano, he said, guess what he did. And also too, like when I was first there, the coach would just give you game film. Like it's yeah. the whole game. So you're just, you're watching it and you're just, you're just, it's just the game. There's no rhythm. There's no nothing. So what Chuck would do, he would per down in distance, per formation, where they're at on the field with this personnel grouping. He says, yeah. guys, in this formation, on this down and distance, 99% of the time, they probably run this route, right? Mm-hmm. Now, it could change. Yeah, so yeah. what he would do is he would put that play back to back to back to back, all different games, but also you start developing that pattern. And he'd be like, guys, listen, these are six plays, okay? Just six plays. Yeah. They may not run them. But when you see this and that guy comes down, this is a pull, and those are the one or two plays that change the game, right? He's like, everything else, just play the responsibility of the coverage. Yeah. And be a football player. Right. Up. And you know what? You're just so you're just out there playing, but all of a sudden you're like, oh shit. This and, and because when you're watching the film, it was like that same play 10 times in a row. So you start <laughs> formulate that pattern and yeah, also you yeah. see it, you're like oh shit here here it comes but he's yeah. like these six plays they might not run any of them guys i don't know but these are the best chances that we have yeah and he just made it fucking simple dude simple as fuck other another coach here's four games and you're just watching you're like what am i even looking at here right now man like what is this shit Bro. or 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 hey guys I, I, I was up here last night. That's another thing, too. I think coaches should all have to go home at 11 because <laughs> they stay in there and they start coaching ghosts, dog. I remember, I, and again, I love Rob Ryan. He was a hard-working-ass coach, man. He, yeah. That motherfucker, he'd be, he's, guys, listen, fuck going home. I stayed here last night. I don't know what the fuck you guys, you could tell he's all wired off co- uh, uh, co- coffee and just didn't sleep and these guys, listen, I was watching with this offensive coordinator <laughs> six years ago when they ran this, they ran this bootleg and it was a reverse pass. And I'm going, oh my God, man. I'm like, you know what, coach, if they run that play and they get us, they got us, dude. But I'm like, man, we need to focus. Like we need to come together and we need to focus on some shit that you're talking about one play from seven years ago. When this offensive coordinator was in a team with dudes that didn't even play, but he's like, I'm just telling you, this guy's an asshole, and I think this could come up. And I'm like, dude, you guys are in here way too long, man. Like, you guys are making shit way too difficult, dude. Like, let's keep this shit simplified. And I remember this. Hey, guys, in this formation with 22 personnel, 51% of the time it's pass. I'm like, so 49% of the time it's run. So that's, that's 50-50, dog. Come on, man. That shit is 50-50, bro. Hey, you fucking stupid. Oh my dude. Come on, just say it. it's run or pass, man. Just be alert for either one, man. For real, be alert for either one of those things. But some guy, again, some guys, and you're out there, if you're trying to think that shit and you're trying to call plays out, you're trying to every, it's like, dude, <laughs> Just make some plays, man. Just be a football player, bro. Hey, so hey, let me ask you this real quick, man. Now that your brother that 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 you know now now that I'm I'm, I'm unemployed and I'm doing this shit, <laughs> right? when, 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 when can we pick a day where me and you could do a show once a week? Um, I'd have to. I I I'd. Because my girl, my kids are gonna be starting school here soon. Yes, sir. At, at Purdue, they go off the college schedule, so I think my kids start the twelfth of August. Okay. So I just need to see exactly what their schedule are gonna be, and what sports they have going on. So I, I don't want to make a commitment, and then uh, I, I don't know what my schedule is yet. Figure that out when you get home. 
and let's talk about it because I, you know, the, the nation loves this shit, man. Like, like well, I, you said what? No, I'm just reading right now. I couldn't uh, imagine. Nah, man, the nation loved this shit, man. They, they they want they want to have this once a week, man. So <laughs> I see that's what they just said just now, man. That that's the thing. It's like, dude, it's football, man. Like you can't you can't water it down too much, man. It's like, dude. What, what, what you talking about? No, he, he's saying uh Josh Jacobs getting a personal foul for trucking that ATF oh. defender. Like, come on, man. Like oh, that game, bro. That shit was terrible. That was a terrible call. Dude, I mean, it's football, man. Like, at some point, like, I don't understand this. A, a receiver's running down the field, in play, quarterback's throwing it, and they got like this, and you got to wait for him to catch it, turn, and see you for you to be able to hit him. Yeah. So I got to sit here and kind of wait and, like, like, oh, should I come? Should I? Like, dude, why? If you're not leading with your helmet and it's a legitimate hit, how, what, what the fuck, man? That's the quarterback's fault. Anyways, he shouldn't have thrown that shit. Like, the, the receivers should come back and be like, dude, why did you throw me that ball? Like, I'm looking at you. <laughs> and you're throwing me that ball, man. I'm probably going to be open. Straight like, through. again, Trent Green, they ran four verticals. He didn't look me off. If yeah. I was Tony Gonzalez, I'd be like, what the fuck? You didn't look Stu off, man. You set me up, bro. Like, what the fuck? He's in the middle of the field. At least look to the left and have him go over that guy just to – no, dude, he was didn't look me off long enough, man. So that, like, some of that stuff, it's like, man, as a defender, I don't know, man. I think, I think I said when I watched that game, I was like, this is this is football. I was like, what the like, guys just flopping around and receivers running everywhere, and and that's why I feel why why you said I haven't been watching the legs. I'm like, I I get it, I get it. Like that, I I don't know, man. I just I like, I'm from the Big Ten, dude. I'm from again, two tight ends, a fullback, a running back, one receiver, and he's blocking people, and they're running between the tackles, man. And it's about you, who's gonna be the toughest motherfucker in this game, dude. Like, who's that offense is gonna wear me, like wear me down, or I'm gonna wear them down. But this yeah. pretty like, all yeah. these formations and little trickery, <laughs> all that funny bullshit, man. Like. Go and smack a motherfucker in their face, and that shit dies down real quick. Real quick. So, real quick, man. Wait, so, you're going to be home tomorrow, right? Yeah. See, my here's the deal. I, my flight leaves at noon, and which is 3 o'clock East Coast time. Mm. I have a connection. I don't land in Indy until like 1038. Okay. Okay. So, um, tomorrow's going to be a tomorrow's gonna be a long day for me, man. No, no, no. no. You're good, brother. I, everybody just wondering, you know, so when you gonna make make it home, be cool. You oh know? yeah, yeah. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. So the hotel actually, uh, they provide transportation to the airport, and um, yeah, I mean tonight, I'm, I'm gonna pack here. Oh, I didn't. Well, that's what I'll have to do too. Well, next time I'm on, I'll show you guys the swag that we got from the Raiders. Um, but yeah, I'm just I'm gonna pack my stuff up right now. I'm just gonna chill and probably go to bed here probably pretty soon. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Because like I said, there's, I don't think there's anybody – I think everybody left, so. Okay. Yeah. Okay. And I said I, I had enough fun going out and you – know, You know what's so crazy, bro? Trying like, to get a big shot again. We've been talking for damn near three hours, bro, and there's still 230 people in the chat. But I'm going but, to but be honest with you. I'm going to go take my ass to sleep. Go so, for it, bro. Yeah. So, so Stu, man, I want to say this, brother. I love you, man. I appreciate you, bro. I, I, I'm I'm so happy, man, that you got to go out to Vegas and, and and the notoriety that you deserve. You went out there and got it, and bro, you know what's great too is I I saw the only person I didn't get a chance to talk to was Mark Davis, but I saw everybody else I wanted to. I had a good time. Um, I didn't I didn't miss something or uh, you know I didn't. I didn't do anything where someone was like, Jesus Christ, dude, you know, like, whatever. You know, I, everything worked out perfect. Yeah, 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 yeah. Everything worked out perfect. Because sometimes, man, I might just say, fuck this, dude, I'm out of here and jump on a flight and, like, be gone. Like, I'm over this shit or something like that. But everything was cool, man. I mean, everything everything worked out phenomenal. And I, I got to connect with everyone I wanted to. 
and it was it was good, dude. It was it was it was a lot of fun. Um, and again, the Raiders do a phenomenal job. Mark Davis and his staff, and and the way that they treat the players, dude, and like getting a chance to be around like the old heads and yeah. looking at their Super Bowl rings and yeah. you know them talking about their old days, and it was just everybody was just. And we had little Lan- 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 lanyard. You know, you could just come up to a guy. Hey, I'm Stuart. What year did you play? What year did you play? And you just have that automatic respect. It wasn't like, you know, well, hey, son, or what did you do? It's like you're a Raider, man, you know, and they would just get into it. And it was just fun, man. It's fun being around former professionals because, again, dude, we're football fans, man, and it's just fun to talk talk shop sometimes and complain about the way people True. are pussies nowadays. Can, can we get a Raiders? Can we get a Red? Come on, man. What, a what? Can we get a raid? What do I what do I do? Dirt? What? Do can I finish get, it? Can we get a Raiders? Raiders. Is that it? That's all we needed. Mm. That's, that's all we you nailed it, King. You nailed it, King. Hey, so when you get home, man, let's uh definitely talk. I, I, I want to get I want to figure out a situation where weekly we can do this and and um Stream it between my my page and your page. Yeah, yeah. And what 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 I think what we need to do though is is maybe really like set a time limit <laughs> and just have like a we're gonna talk about these three things. Then when that time is done and we didn't get to it, <laughs> or, yeah, just like all right, guys, see it. You know, tune in next week. You know, because again, some like like sometimes I want I want people to like you know listen to it but not sit here for three or four hours you know what i'm saying like i get it it can be long i want them to be able to like while they're working out maybe listen to something watch the replay oh still still let me let me tell you something real quick this channel is a little different man the whole time we've been doing this for three hours we had 300 plus 400 plus people watching this let me let me tell you this people are engaged because we keep people engaged and and they, and they, and they really rock with us and they really respect this and they really love us shout shout to the chat because they really support this they they make this channel what it is absolutely that's good so, so don't get me wrong don't get me wrong like i i know what you're saying but if we talk for 3 hours our guys are here they they're look bro they are engaged they're fucking with it so you know th- hey, here's the deal dude i will Listen, I will watch the stuff and you'll see like how I break things down and I will tell you what's really going on with the defense, offense, schemes, who's to blame, yeah. whatever. I mean, that's that's what I'm that's what I do, dude. Like that's I I break shit down. So like when people like right now, I just I don't know anything. I, I just I don't. I no, just no, have- but that's that's the perfect thing. So when week one comes. I want to go live, and I want you to talk about breaking down the defense, breaking down what's going on, and, and we we can we can break down some shit. You know what I mean? But we, we can break down what's going on on the football field week one. Yeah. Well, I think first though, what I would like to do is I would like to break down my film just because I know for. Oh, I, I would love, bro. That that's I would love to do that first before anything. Be, well, the only reason I say that is because. I know what the defense was. I know what the players' responsibilities were. I know where there was holes and where someone didn't do anything. With with the Raiders now, I might know what they're in, but unless I know the actual defense and what players' responsibilities are, yeah. it's hard for me to really judge somebody if I don't know if he had curl flat, if he had the tight end, if he had yeah. – so I'd, I'd need to watch a little bit to kind of get into it a little bit. You know what I'm saying? We, we- we gonna we gonna talk like we always do on the phone, and we'll we'll, we'll get some more stuff established behind the scenes before we do some certain shows. Works for me, man. Okay, my brother, man. Hey, look, I love you, man. Get home safe, brother. Yeah, thank you. I, I love that you went out there and you got, bro. You got your flowers because that's what. Hey, you- fuck me. I'm glad you quit that job and you're doing what you want to do, bro. You get up, you gotta, you you fucking. It takes balls to step out of your comfort zone and fucking do what you want to do. It's scary, but I guarantee you, dude, you're gonna be. You're, it's 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 for the best, and life's too short to do something that you don't love, dude. Fuck that, fuck that, dude. Try it, and maybe you know what the shit don't work, and after a year, go do something else. 
Well, you know what? To hear that from you, my brother, that, that speaks volumes and, and you really made my decision even that much more easier. And um, I appreciate you, King. And like I said, I'm going to give you your flowers every time I talk to you. You know what I mean? So you you may be like, oh, man, stop, stop, stop. I don't want to hear that shit. Get the fuck out of here. I don't want to hear that shit. Because I respect it. Like, you've done something that 99.9% of these people in the world can never, ever, ever do. So we love you, brother. Everybody in the comment section, man. Stoo, 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 stoo. <laughs> well, at first, I, I actually like being in the comment section and just kind of earlier remember when i was in there kind of rapping with people whatever so yeah i don't know it's fun man but it's, it's also great for people to hear your voice see your face and know that it's real you know what i mean so i i i, I do know this too coming here and reconnecting with some guys i'll get some guys on here dude trust me i'll get i'll get some guys just that even just coming in for five minutes just to say what's up some of my old teammates and shit dude well, hey, I'll, get, I'll, I'll get some guys back on here, dude. I, I would, I would love it, but also, man, I just, bro, I appreciate you, man. And um, I, I tell everybody all the time, I'm like, I'm like, Stu can be the new Kwame Brown. He can come and just, <laughs> Stu can come on and be the new Kwame Brown. Um, <laughs> tell you, uh, I mean, I love Kwame. Um, he's a little, he's a little more hood than me. I mean. That <laughs> I'll admit it, that dude, he's... Hey, we all love mama's cooking, though, man. You know what I mean? So, hey, hey. <laughs> it works itself out, man. But Absolutely, dude. No, again, dude, it's about the fans, man. And, again, any chance that I can shed insight into what really happens. And, again, I'm not up here trying to get... I'm not on ESPN. I This isn't some character of me. I'm not saying what I think I should say, or what a producer's telling me to say, or what I think I need to say to get more followers. I don't give a fuck about none of that shit. I just say what I know, what I experience. And again, I just call myself a realist, dude. That's it. I just I just try to stay practical, man. That's all I try to do. And if you can call yourself that, that lets you know it's 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 some real ass shit. Like for real, for like, real. But but I, I, no man, three hours in, brother. I love you, man. Hey hey, call me when you get home tomorrow. Let's I will. Definitely, let's definitely build. And um, I want to talk to you about a weekly show. I, I want to get some other people on. And um, yeah. We we talked about some shit behind the scenes, but I want to actually really 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 break some shit down to you. So call All me right. when you get a chance tomorrow, man. All family, get home, spend some time with your kids, your wife. Yep. Call me sometime during the week and let's build, brother. Always, man. Later Nation. Love you. Later Nation, man. Love you, brother. Shout out to the chat gang, man. I love y'all, man. Stu out there in Vegas doing this Dougie, man. This shit was so fire, man. You already know, man. I, I, man come on, man. Come on. You know what we do. You know what we do. You know what we do. Come on. You know what we do over here, man. You know what we do over here, man. This is what it is. You feel me? But um, I love y'all nation, real talk. Um, I got some things, some more things in the works that I'm about to drop. And y'all about to be like, what the fuck? Like, what the fuck? So just know, man. <laughs> Your bro doing his thing, man. Trust me, man. So I appreciate you guys. I love every single one of y'all, man, that's helping this channel by commenting, by just being here, by hitting a like, by hitting the thumbs down, all of it. It don't matter. Everything means something, man. You feel me? You feel me? You you seem happier, Docs. I am, my brother. I am, man. I am, bro. Because I can go live tonight with, with Stu till 12. I, I could Look, Stu would have talked another two hours, man. I'm going to be honest with you. I know Stu. I'm ready to go. I'm ready to go to sleep. <laughs> you know what I mean? But it's 12 o'clock out here. And um, I don't have to worry about waking up tomorrow morning and, and stressing out about going to work. You know what I mean? So it is what it is, man. My brother Emmerich said, keep up the great work. Um, Terrence said, I just got goosebumps, man. Bro, man, you already know, man. Um, but hey, I love you guys, man. I promise you guys, 
I swear to God, I'm not finna stop with this shit. I'm not going to stop with this shit. I love you guys, man. Facts. Shout out to the nation, man. I love y'all, man. Real talk. One.